Welcome back to Straight Facts. It's Wednesday. So much to unpack after an epic night of Champions League football. More games to look forward to this evening as well. Lots of hot takes, lots of views, lots of opinions as well. Uh, thank you, everyone who's tuned in so far. Please make sure that you have smashed the like button. Please make sure you're subscribing. I'm joined as ever by the brilliant Dan Lawless and man like Judge Mo. How are we, gentlemen? We both well? Very well, very well. Looking forward to today's show, mate. Some great topics coming up. It's going to be a juicy one. I'm it right. is. I'm you good. Right, I'm, very good. I'm, good. I'm sure? good. I'm good. I'm very, very good. I'm very, very good. Happy Eid, everybody. You know the drill. 1,000 likes live and 2,000 if you're watching this in the replay, at least. The least amount of likes accepted for this, so we don't want to interrupt you in the middle of the show. Like the video now. Now, just stop what you're doing now. Like it now. And if you're watching this in the replay... Like it first because you're in for a great show. Look at the smile on Dan Lawless. The guy <laughs> just can't wait, bro. He can't wait. Hit that like button, people. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel. Of course, uh, Football Terrace, absolutely brilliant, brilliant, brilliant place to be. I appreciate that. And obviously, we're going to get into the Arsenal game and everything that surrounds it. I want to talk about City's game and more crap really that's being thrown at uh, Erling, Erling Haaland we're going to talk about Phil Foden's excellent performance but I wanted to start off actually with the situation in the Premier League so the Premier League have today announced via Sky Sports that this notion and I know it was sort of discussed last week a lot about this luxury tax so clubs can now lose more money essentially um, if they want to quote unquote have a go at, go at it the Premier League of unanimous... I mean, it's not even got to a vote stage. So they're not even going to vote for it. It isn't going to happen. And Premier League points deductions are here to stay for financial breaches. So if a club loses too much money, if they overspend, if they break the rules, the Premier League are essentially saying, and the clubs have agreed to this, that points deductions will remain in place. And again, this is on the backdrop of, you know, a number of clubs having points deductions. Everton with a further two this week. And a lot of people complaining about it, but it does appear that the majority of the clubs in the Premier League believe that it's right to have a safety net and a limit on how much they can encourage clubs to lose and indebt themselves. I just wanted to get your reaction to the Premier League shutting down the idea of this luxury tax coming into the game. Yeah, that's that's a that's a sort of quick change of development because it was it was a few weeks ago we talked about the rule change in next season. Um, and, and, and it being relaxed and now it just seems they've taken a, a U-turn or, or maybe that wasn't the case and it was rumours. But yeah, I just I do I do worry for the future in terms of competitiveness in the league. Like we've touched on this before about it sort of keeping the status quo in the league and it just makes it difficult. Like, you know, I'm seeing like the likes of Ipswich, if they want to really invest, if they get promoted, like how are they going to then be able to go and, you know, keep themselves in the league and then push on like Forest. You look at Nottingham Forest, they got deducted points. They lost a lot of players and they had to go and spend a lot of money to replenish their squad after losing all that money and try and stay in the league. If they would have replenished that with cheap sort of players and, and you know, tried to get players from like League Two and that, they probably would have got relegated. So it, it's going to make it really difficult for clubs. And I'm not seeing the likes of Man United and Arsenal's and that being you know at risk you know they've said that your clubs can't spend so much but the clubs that are being really deducted points are the Everton's and Forest so yeah they said I, I I'm not I think it like we said before needs a new system I think or a big revamp to the system yeah they should scrape FFP completely and, and replace it with something else but it's not luxury tax that's for sure I know that because that would just allow Manchester City and Newcastle to outspend everyone else because I know Terry likes to do Everyone is a billionaire, but there is a billionaire with six billion, and there is a billionaire with a hundred billion. 
there's a massive difference between no, both. I, I, I do like, like, agree. Like, I'm, do not, agree I'm not calling you out. No, I'm just no, saying no, there's I, a difference. You get, you get my point. I, I, I do agree with that. It, it was just when Arsenal fans said we can't compete with Roman and the Cronkies are richer than Roman. That's when I disagreed. Yeah, but state, comparing state, him, state, state, yeah, state. comparing it to, to Newcastle's <laughs> owners, no, no, that, that's a different... That's a different <laughs> They might as well be me with my money in comparison. They're still, even though they're billionaires, yes. they're still poor in comparison. I agree. Exactly. I agree. So I get that. Luxury tax was a terrible idea, but I still think this FFP thing is not great. I don't think it's good. I know that, the, that people talk about bankruptcy and all the stuff. I don't think it's good. Clubs should be allowed to spend and not related to their profit. They should be allowed to spend equally if they have a safety net, as Lawless said, that will prevent the club from going bankrupt. I keep repeating this, and people don't like to hear it. We need the forest to be able to spend, if they have the money, without getting bankrupt. And it's not about their, their profit. It's not about their revenue. Because for them to make the revenue, they might need to overspend a little bit. And as long as the owners could put a bond in a bank, and they can keep the club going, even if the owners decide to sell... I think Nottingham Forest should be allowed to get a new stadium, get players. Everton should be allowed to do that, even if they don't make money. Well, because I believe this later will lead yeah, to them making right. money. So, Mo, what I will say is this. If the losses come through investing in youth players, the women's game, improving the stadium, improving the training ground, these losses are not points deductible. So let's say you lose £100 million, but 95 million of that was youth players, women's football, and a, new, a part of a new stadium. You deduct that, you've only lost 5 million, you haven't breached yeah. the, the, the PSR rules. So those limitations are already in place. Owners can pump, uh, theoretically, a, a billionaire owner of a mid-table club could pump £2 billion into the club to build a new stadium, build a new training ground. There's nothing stopping that billionaire from doing that. So therefore, they can increase their revenues and spend more money. They're not doing it. <laughs> they're, they're, this is this is this is the risk. Why they're spending it on be, players' wages? They're this this is why there needs to be a safety net. Because yes, the owners spend money on buying it, but a lot of these owners they only really want it for a ten to fifteen year period, and they want to sell it as and they want to sell it on for profit. A hundred and ten percent, they want to sell it on for profit in the future. So they're not going to do what Roman did and run up a one point six billion pound debt and then write it off. They're not going to do what the Sheikh's doing or what Newcastle's owners are doing. The majority are trying to build a sustainable business so they can sell it for a profit in the future. So as much as, and if you, and if everyone speaks about competitiveness and I hear you lawless, but if you just let everyone spend what they want, you're going to get three or four owners that spend what they want and the rest are going to stay where they are because they're, they're not trying to become the best football team in the world by oh. spending as many billions as possible. They're buying a club for 500 million and they're, they're hoping to run it well. They're hoping to win things. They're hoping to improve. They're hoping to move that club forward. But they will want, it's like with Chelsea. Most of Chelsea fans won't want to admit it. They're owned by Clear Lake. They're an investment company. What do you think they're investing in Chelsea for? For fun? No, at some point they want to sell that club a 50%, an 100%, a 200% profit for what they've invested into it. Now, they're going to have to be successful to do that. So it, it theoretically is a double-edged sword. But I do think checks and balances need to be there. I wasn't a fan of the luxury tax, though, because I, it didn't make much sense to me how much extra you're going to charge people, who gets the money, how is that really fair? But I do believe in a safety net approach. Uh, viewers, let us know what you think and feel. Um, any sympathy at all this week with Everton losing more points? <sighs> Uh, yeah, no, no sympathy from me. Um, look, I, I've been wanting Everton to get relegated. Look, I can't. It's hard for me to remove any any bias from this because I do want them to go down. I would look if I was in their position, I would feel bad. But look, they've never seen their team get relegated. So we're talking about, you know, before we went live. Why Terry, do you want them to get out. relegated? I'm sorry, Lawless. They, it's just their time. It's their time. They've been you, play, with it. you you play the same brand of football. No, it's not about how it's not it's not about the football they play. They could play the best football ever, but they've just not been we've not seen them get relegated from this Premier League. Their fans should experience it. Right? I feel, <laughs> You're just I, a hater, bro. It's just a hater. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that is the it's just... In fairness, that, that is the best explanation I've heard. It's just 
I want their fans to experience what we've all felt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it, listen, it makes you stronger. Never heard that. You know what I mean? It's their time, Mo. It's their time. I've never so. heard that before. <laughs> <laughs> all right, look, look, don't you... All right, we all like to see, as Not football this. fans, right? whatever league we watch, right? we like to see it when a new team wins the league, right? Yeah. It's it's great to see, right? Leicester, wow, we've never seen Leicester, Blackburn. I, we also like to Arsenal, see it. Arsenal, wow, I don't know Arsenal, about new team. Well, we, I, I, listen, we're of an age we've seen them. They're not that. All right, all right, all right, all right. But this, that applies to relegations. I don't know about you, but it's also good to see new oh, teams go down. No, listen, Rob, I hear you. I, my, my view's a little different. I've got no beef with Everton, but there's a, there's a, they've got one fan. This is all, This is just petty, bruv. They've got one fan online who has done, and a lot. there's probably a lot like them, who has done nothing during this points deduction situation. They've just blamed the Premier League. And, and for me, that's why I'm hoping they go down. For all the Everton fans who have not self-reflected and gone, okay, done up the rules. I think the Premier League are being harsh. Why are they not speeding up the investigation to Chelsea? Why have they not done anything to City yet? Okay, ask those questions. But not a single. Maybe they're doing it privately, but not a single public question have they posed to how the hell they've been run. And I feel like yeah. if fans are naive enough, and I mean this genuinely, if you're not, the way your club's been run for the past five years is the reason you're in this situation. The fact you're ignoring that and attacking the league, it almost tells me that, I'm not saying you don't love your club, but you're misguided. You're legitimately misguided because all your attention right now should be on your club and how you're being run. Genuinely, it's not the league's fault. But I thought they protested. They Last season, the season before, you remember yeah, but when fans, the English, players English on, on, fans, English fans, we all say we, we all say we protest, but we don't do anything really. Every now and then, a club gets into a really bad state, like Blackpool, and barely anybody's turning up, so they're doing yeah. something. But we we get annoyed, we boo a little bit at grounds, we get some scarves out, or we yeah. or, 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 or we raise a banner. But very few people give up season tickets. Fans don't boycott. I'm not advocating for anything violent or anything aggressive or nasty, but what Man United did to get call that Liverpool game off, I reckon if we just did that for every home game, to a point, the Glazers would have sold. They would have been forced to. Everyone would be forcing them to. And you can't stop, you know, 100,000, 150,000 Man United fans from doing what the hell the hell they want. But there's only this, you know, and even with Man United protests, and fair play to everyone that went, went they only ever have them on match days when they're going to the ground anyway. They're not... Yeah protesting on days where they're not meant to be there. And I'm not taking anything away uh, from it, but I don't think that what I mean by this is, I, I, I think fair play for going, but the owners don't care about it because when you finish protesting and you come into the stadium and you buy a program, you buy a burger, you pay for your ticket, they're, they're, they're laughing. They're going, all that protest and you gave me I money. With you. I think I disagree with you. It, like the, Everton, the way Everton have breached FFP is them the owners investing in the club buying players nah. building a new stadium hold on yeah okay, okay building a new stadium so they did it for the benefit of the club the fact that they thought they would get somewhere and get some money that's kind of of a miss reading of the situation they thought would be here and they ended up here so they lost some money so actually the owners did what's good for the club they got that's players what, they, they built they a stadium that. they built a stadium they Agreed. got players Right, agree with that. And they invested in the training ground, if I'm not mistaken, and they lost money because they thought we'll be fifth by now. We're sixth, but so they I, ended up I, being 18. So right? I agree with that. Same as sports. Exactly. And lost. Same they as and lost. Lost. They yeah, I, I agree. So you want fans mo, 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 to mo. With them? Okay, okay, no, but this is the thing. No, so I'm not saying I do want the fans to protest because they've got it wrong still. Okay, I want the fans to okay, maybe not protest. I, I'm happy to be challenged on that, but they have to still look within. You gambled and it went wrong. Yes. You're still to blame. At the end of the day, if I gamble and go, right, I'm going to expand my businesses and I load myself with debt so that I can expand my businesses and my business plan and my acumen doesn't come through and I go bankrupt and my family lose its home, it's no good shouting at the bailiffs or the court when they say you're being evicted. I'm to blame. I took a gamble on growing and bettering my life. I messed up. I made the mistake and, and we're just putting it down to not succeeding in the plan here. No outside influence. It's still on me. I am still accountable for that. And that's the element. The only element of Everton that's frustrated me is that there's been very little self accountability from them as a fan base and as a yeah. club. We were all watching them spend for two or three years going, hang on, 
how, how are Everton spending that amount Lemon of money? Forest, yes. It, we all looked at it and said, that's strange. Yeah. That seems far too much for a club their size. And then their fans, don't be jealous, you're salty. Now they've broken the rules that, by the way, they all voted in. Yes. That they voted, they voted, the, Everton, one of the clubs, pushing for things like FFP to stop the bigger clubs from spending more money. They then broke the rules. I don't have that much sympathy for them. And they admitted it. They and I, I'm sorry, God, I, I want to I I just, just challenge that. Do you know why Everton fans are upset everywhere? Because they don't see other clubs getting punished, like Man City and Chelsea. Well, li- not That's Forrest, their problem. They? Their problem but, but the Man scale. City thing, Mo, this is the thing, what the they Man don't City get. Are different the... Them, but the quick, the, lawless, the quickness of them... Did because they points. admitted it. They pleaded guilty. If you plead guilty, Mo... I know, I know they did. Court, I know they did. But it, the Everton fans are saying all over... The the Everton fans are saying, yeah, we admitted it guilty because we showed our documents. Yes, we gambled, as Terry said, and we got it wrong. The other guys, they did the same and they got it wrong, but they're hiding it. But you can't, you can't punish them because they are not collaborating with you. Because so there's, a the there's a process. So process. why us? Then the other guys want trophies. The other guys are allowed to spend because they're hiding it. While us then, who then, came forward, then... us who came forward, we're getting punished for being honest. But the other guys aren't being honest. And you no, can't then, then they punish them, them so because they guilty. aren't honest. This is exactly how Everton fans are seeing it. They aren't looking yeah, at it from that perspective. They're looking at it from that yeah, perspective. Stupid. Because, Mo, it's, Mo, it's because you're just looking at it for self-satisfying. No, I just want to say this is because no, no, bang on, mate. Bang on, cry on, mate. Yeah, no, the city thing is being is gonna play be played out and go go to courts and all that 2025, right? It's gonna start in November, October time. And it's probably going to be so. If they they is it's not gotten away with it, they're not just gone. Ah, well, they didn't plead guilty, so they get away with it. If, if we both commit a crime, Mo, and we you know go to court, and you plead guilty and I plead not guilty, like obviously if you plead guilty, then it's case closed, isn't it? Okay, you're guilty. Here's the here's the sentence. Blah blah blah. If you plead not guilty, well then there's you have to prove, and there, there's a whole process right that you have to go through. So it's not like Man City are getting away with it. Because they didn't plead guilty and they haven't showed their documents, it's on the FA Premier League to is their burden of proof to prove that they did it. I know, but that's I'm the thing. If Everton, it would have been the same for Everton, though, Mo. If Everton said we're not guilty, we're not showing you anything, it would have been the same. And it was only because Everton did plead guilty, admit it, that they got a reduced points deduction. So instead of getting three this time, they got two. They got points removed from 10 down to six last time because they pled guilty. So I'm telling you how they're looking at it, right? I'm telling you. I know that what you're saying, Lawless, is reality on life. I'm telling you how I hear Everton fans on their podcast. I hear how Everton fans see it on Twitter. When you, when you listen to any podcast about Everton, they tell you this. They tell you, we misrun the club, but for the benefit of our club, and we showed our documents and you're punishing us so quickly. The others aren't being treated the same because they hid their documents. And they're talking about Chelsea as well. They're talking about, oh, this guy, Todd Bowley, got a clean slate because Roman wrote out a debt because he can. So, so, Mo, I hear what you're saying. That's what Everton fans are saying. I don't want to call people silly or stupid, but they've got to read. Yeah, that, was, that was the joke. But... <laughs> no, but no, listen, but I, hear, I hear you, though. This is the problem. I know I'm guilty of, the, guilty of this sometimes, and I try my best to, to be better. You need to listen, stop listening to respond and listen to understand. And I get Everton fans are angry. I saw them kicking off that although Forest have lost more money, they've got a bigger breach. Their points deduction was less. The reason that was is because they fully cooperated instantly. Where Everton, there was a bit of a bit of um, to in and fro in, and Everton sort of supplied explanations to which the Premier League and the independent panel reviewed and went, this is nonsense, like you're making things up. That's the elements where the fans have got to look at their own club and say, just stop the bullshit in and be honest, because you've already seen that being honest gets you into less trouble here. And it maybe if Everton were honest from the beginning, they wouldn't have had a, a six point plus two point, eight point deduction. Maybe it would only be three points and they'd be in less trouble of relegation right now. And all of that is controllable. Everyone, I spoke at length on one of the only YouTube channels. In fact, one of the only football platforms really to speak about the, 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 the city stuff at length whenever anything new has come out or these conversations have come up. But I'll defend City in this particular instance because their situation is the complete opposite. It's, it's completely unique in comparison to Everton's and Nottingham Forest's. 
and it's being investigated and they're essentially they've been waiting on court dates and the only reason it's taken this there's been loads of reasons it's taken this long to get to the charges the reason from the charges until the court case is taken so long is simply because finding a date to actually hold a trial that uh, with the, with the level of QC that you need, that's been a really big component in this. It's not comparable in any way, shape, or form. Chelsea's situation is broken into two. They've got FFP problems, which they might breach this financial year. They were fine in the last financial year, and then they've got the investigation that's only been going on since October. And it's a, not an investigation into whether or not you lost money, and then looking at your official trading accounts. It's an investigation into some clandestine you know, uh, third party payments. And it, that's obviously, obviously is a much bigger situation with huge ramifications, which is not comparable. And I think that the biggest mistake here is because most of the mainstream, I mean, we saw Jamie Carragher make, have a little pop at City last night. I don't know if you've seen the clip where he, he does, he's like, who's going to make it through to the final of the Champions League. And then at the end, he says, and the team to win it is the team with 115 charges. And he got a bit of a laugh. Sky Sports, how often are they talking about these things? How often are BT Sport? I mean, in depth, getting experts on having these conversations. That's a big reason why fans on the outside don't really understand what's going on because the conversations are not being are not being had. So I understand their confusion, but they're not comparable in any way, shape, or form. And I and I'll kind of to a degree, I'm gonna kind of back City and Chelsea in that regard, they, 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 they can't be expecting the same treatment. We have some super, uh, super chats here. First one says, Mo is right. Hiding documents should get an initial points deduction uh, that can be uh, added if found not guilty. That's why uh, Everton fans are pissed. I never I said mean, that, Ochi, but, but I hear you. I never said yeah. that. I literally presented the case of Everton fans. Do I agree with them? In a sense, but not fully. But I get what Terry's saying. He's like, you got to understand the rules. And that's it. And what Lola's saying. But I never said that hiding a document should get initial point deduction. That will cause a lot of trouble, Uchi. Sorry. Yeah, you can't say, you're not showing me your document of right point <laughs> deduction for you now. Like, that's, and then that's if, you're found, if you're not guilty later, we'll get you the point back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, listen, I mean, look, if you make it a rule, you make it a rule. If the club asks for financial docs and you say no, they can do something, maybe. But... Yeah, that, that law's got to be in place like well ahead of time. It can't just come in uh, willy-nilly at any point. Uh, the process is called it's beneficial for City to be in the league so they won't get punished. Lawless is naive uh, to how much money corrupts justice. I'm, listen, I'm not saying there's no such thing as there's no corruption at all anywhere. What I'm saying is Man City's case is being tried at a later date because they've not pled guilty. So there's a longer process and not given up their documents. So we'll have to wait and see till that court date comes and find out if they get off, then we can ask questions of why they've got off. And if not, we'll see. Or if they do get found guilty, but just get like, here's a 50 million pound mm. fine. Then we can say, Whoa, that's not fair. You know? So we'll start, we just have to wait and see. Uh, a cashier says point deductions will not be harsh enough, but it's a start to sort clubs out financially. An independent regulator is still coming. I think it's, I mean, that's why the investigation needs to, to play out. And I think more clubs need to be looked at because to your point, Lawless, if, if there's loads of the top clubs that are like inflating their sponsorship deals to be able to spend far more, you know, just stopping that from happening could potentially help the, the smaller clubs financially catch up. You know, if suddenly, a number of the teams that are doing six, seven, eight hundred million a turnover are only doing four, five hundred. The gap mm. between you and them shrinks dramatically. So I do, th I think some regulation would actually help personally. My wage caps, I think it's a pipe dream, but wage caps would be the best thing because I feel like I like wage cap. I'm, I'm I'm blank, that, that, by yeah. the way, your UEFA will introduce this. You already said. In the I don't know. If they, but I don't know if they can. I'm, 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 I'm. The reason why I don't know if they can, we probably couldn't the prem. Um, I'm going to Google this now. EU law on capping salary. I swear there's some kind of law in the EU. Uh, the problem with mm. salary caps in the European Union. Spain has union salary, cap, uh, salary uh, caps have been part of the US professional sports for a long time. Da, 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 da. I mean, there's something. Uh, there's a long thing. I'm not going to read know, it now. Oh, oh, no, salary cap exists in Spain already. Okay, okay, okay. But what I'm saying is, it's it's these these laws are a lot. Hot. Again, I'm not going to read this because it's a 287 page document. But I remember listening to somebody speak before about wage cap caps and saying it can be really difficult. Um, because again, what you can't do is 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 have a, what you don't want to do in England is have a wage cap where no one else is following because then your best player, the, the best yeah, players yeah. are not going to be attracted to your league. It's, it's going to be a wage, to, but it won't it won't be England to, only. 
yeah, it's hard to get it across the board because of EU laws yeah. around ca around like capping somebody's salary. So it's a difficult thing to do here compared to the states. But look again, I'm not overly against it. Again, you know, as long as the money is staying in football and going somewhere else, I don't really mind. But it's just so a Wolves or a West Ham can still compete with the likes of the teams like Man United in terms of wages for players. You know, we can sign a Kudus because we can play a Kudus high wages you know as much as you know man united might pay him and if you if you really push this ffp well then our capacity to spend on wages is a lot less than man united so it makes it harder for us to sign those top quality players like if you're a villa or wolves or west ham or brighton or whatever so that's why i think something like that would be good rather than just you know blanket ffp mm. Um, yeah, yeah so I, th I think that makes a lot of sense. I mean, my club wastes money on salary, so I'd rather us be capped. If we'd have been capped on salary for the last 10 years, we probably would have saved ourselves about 40 better, million. Yeah, it <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, would be, it could protect you as well if you, if, you, if you don't have great owners that overspend on things. It's, it's certainly, it certainly could. Um, obviously, guys, last night, um, some amazing, amazing Champions League games. I wanted to start with, with the one in Spain at the Bernabeu, free, free draw. I was a little frustrated these two games were on at the same time just because. I really wanted to watch both of them 100%. And it was, I'm flicking between the two, so you are missing little bits. But it was an amazing game. I thought Real Madrid so much better than they were last year in terms of they look far more potent, far more dangerous, a lot more speed and power in their team, which I think really helped. City, though, proving why they're the best team in the world, proving why they're the favourites. Phil Foden stepping up and looking majestic. But I wanted to ask about a particular player to begin with because he's been slated in the press again today. And this statement, sorry, uh, has come out today saying from Van der Vaart saying that Erling Haaland was very bad. If he doesn't score, he's quite useless. I find him a very average player on the ball. We also have a comment that came through, and I don't know how true this comment is. I don't know who it's aimed towards. There's this guy on the stream called Haaland record in the last 10 games atrocious um so harlan got a lot of stick last night a lot of stick last night do, do you agree with the with the criticism that he's getting mo yeah he, he uh, this one is calling me out Look, no Haaland, i get that but i'm talking about like the, the overarching oh, yeah. i'm gonna just yeah. give you one thing erling Haaland is a very top striker very good he's not a good footballer but my, my 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 problem with him if he's not getting service and he's not doing well his teammates are actually bypassing him they're not looking for him they're not even trying to get him involved in the game. They don't care. He's just there. If we get a chance, look at him. The guy had six passes yesterday, guys. 90 minutes. Six passes completed. Right? I think he got like 13 touches. If you're not looking for Haaland, he's not beneficial. A lot of City fans said, why wasn't Haaland substituted yesterday? I know that it's clutch moments and he can win you the game at the end. But I saw him not being involved in the game is hurting City. They could have done better. I know that the game ended 3-3, but they were literally playing man down when they had the ball. He wasn't involved. Yes, Rodiger was marking him. Listen, I'm not someone who sit here and say that Haaland's a bad player. He's a fantastic, phenomenal striker. I would love to have him on my team. However, Haaland is not beyond criticism. He isn't great when he doesn't get service. He isn't great at all. He's very average. He needs to learn. He's still young. And I believe that Man City could have subbed him yesterday, right? And got Julian Alvarez, who would have done better, would have gotten more involved. I believe that a lot of people are afraid to criticize football players these days, especially with someone like Haaland who scored 50 goals last season. But Erling Haaland doesn't get the same treatment like Saka, like Foden, like Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah, when he doesn't play well and he scores a goal, it's like, oh, he masked his stinky performances with a GA. Haaland doesn't get the same because he's a striker. But in the same breath, they tell you about, and Mo Salah is only scores goals. Which one is it? You can have it both. You, which one is it? Is Erling Haaland only there to score goals or he's there to also get involved? You can't have it both. In my opinion, Erling Haaland, if he isn't, Involved, he's useless in the picture. So I don't think Van der Vaart is absolutely spot on. Spot on. I, I have to, I have to disagree, Mo, on several things because it, you say that he doesn't get that treatment. I've literally seen so many, whether it's Sky Sports, Talk Sport, or it's calling him a League Two player. If he's not scoring, he's it's League Two much. level. It's too much. It's it's getting yeah, it's got it's being way blown out of proportion now. And I actually think that 
part of the reason why he is not influencing the game as much when he's not scoring is down to the the role he's been asked to play by Pep Guardiola, the way that Man City play. And you you, you watch and, and they are they do bypass him at times because you can see he's asked to stay higher up the pitch rather than drop deep and get involved in the play. And you contrast how he plays for City versus how he played for Dortmund and how much he did get involved and link up for Dortmund and how much how much more he was passing and and just impacting the game. And it's just different styles of play. So I think it's he's being treated harshly for the role that he's being asked to play by the manager. And I think if he was in a team where, you know, he did have to get involved more, we'd see that. But at the end of the day, to say he's oh, he's a League Two player, like if he's a if he's a good striker, he's a good player because strikers are players. You know, but like I said, I don't think it's his fault. And he is getting the criticism is mad. Like so many YouTube videos, so many pundits, Roy Keane, Ali McQuest on talks, but all that is League Two level, he's, he's rubbish, he's bang average. I don't know. So it's and, and we was talking about this on the show. Was it last week, Terry? Did we was mm. it last week or two weeks ago? We were talking about that crit. So the criticism's been there. Yeah. I, I'm gonna say this, right. I hear your point about the treatment that Salah and Saka and these guys get. So I'm going to keep it the same. And I don't really care about how aesthetically pleasing they are to people. I'm looking at their efficiencies as football players. And Haaland is, is so efficient. All we're seeing is him on, like, he is on the foot. It's not even a bad slump. This is the crazy thing. I was looking at his last 10 games. Uh, didn't score last night, scored against Palace. He did, went three games, Arsenal, Newcastle, Liverpool without scoring. But then he scored against Copenhagen, scored against Man United, scored five against Luton in the FA Cup, didn't score versus Bournemouth, and scored against the winner against, against Brentford. So he's gone one, two, three, four, five games out of his last 10 without scoring, and he scored in the other five games. But in those other five games, he scored nine goals. So a man in a in probably the worst, uh, a man probably in, in the worst form of his professional career has just scored nine goals in 10 games and he's be, being criticized because he hasn't had the greatest overall performances. You go to the previous 10 to 20 games before that and he was banging in ev even more goals. And I agree that he's never going to be Harry Kane on the ball. He's never going to be a Luis Suarez. But I don't agree that he's an average football player because... When you're as an elite a striker as him, that's that's his role. That's what he does. That's his, you know, Del Piero, Inzaghi, Michael Owen. These guys weren't yeah. amazing football players in terms of this this outstanding technical ability. They were all off the shoulder, traditional number nines. And could Haaland's hold up play be a little bit better at times? I think so, but I do believe the criticism against him is every bit as over the top as it is against Saka and it, as it is against Mo Salah. Um, and I'm going to defend Erling Haaland. And I know I had a comment come through a minute ago saying, um, yes, I know he got five goals in one game, but that in itself shows you he's not an average player. How many people have scored five goals in one game against Premier, yeah, League, yeah. Against Premier League opposition in FA Cup games? Same guy says uh, so that Terry, football is entertainment. It is to a certain degree, and I understand that, but we're going too far with it. I've said it for a few weeks now. Yeah. This is not ballet. This is not Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing with the Stars, as they call it in the States. You're not judging people on their, on their, when I say form, I don't mean their form of performance. I'm talking about how they look, their lines. Oh my God, look how, um, like David Beckham was a prime example. He was a good footballer, but when he hit a ball, he's kind of stars before and afterwards. It was almost like poetic in the way he moved, right? Same as Michael Jordan's very famous, obviously the very the famous symbol of Michael Jordan. I bet there are some people that look better doing slam dunks than there are others. I don't watch basketball, but some people just, you look at it and go, that just looks slick. That looks so tidy. And that's not how football is judged, per, not even per se, overly. His job is to put balls into the back of the net. That is what he is. And he is the best in the world in my opinion, right now at, at doing that, or one of the top two or three, you can't be an average footballer when you're one of the best in the world at the hardest skill in football, and that is putting the ball into the back of the net. So I think the claims of average footballer, League One player, League Two player, I think all of that is such a stretch and a reach. If your only job in the game is to put the ball in the back of the net and you're not the best in it in the league, what are you good for? If you're playing the best team in the league, 
and your only mm-hmm. job, you don't contribute a lot. You don't contribute a lot other, other than just tap, get in the right place to score a goal and you aren't the best in there. That's why last season when I said he was by a big margin better than everyone else in terms of goal scoring, I said Ballon d'Or because you got your team over the line. You did your job perfectly that your team won a trouble. But if Oli Watkins, Cole Palmer, Mohamed Salah, and a lot of other people are doing, they're doing the only thing you're good at, the only thing you're good at, better than you, and you don't get involved in the other aspects of the game, but they do, what are you good for? If you can be replaced by one of these guys who, but, do, but, who, who but, do the but, same but, job but, as you, can, but, but, do can he be more. replaced by these guys? Last, I mean, this Not year. Last season. Don't give me last season. Okay, okay no, no, but uh, hang on. But I am going to give you last season, Mo, because we do not. Again, we have to get out of this habit of judging everybody just in the here and now, because form happens in football. So you can't suddenly scrap all of Erling Haaland's CV all of his previous achievements, all of his previous outputs, just because, by the way, right now, in, out of all players in the top five leagues, he is still the third highest goal scorer. Sorry, got goals and assists combined. He has 30 goals and six assists, right? Mbappe's ahead of him on 48. Harry Kane's ahead of him on 51, right? Now, we always hear words like Bundesliga tax, and Liga is classed as the fourth or fifth biggest league. So out of the top three leagues... Uh, no one in Europe has scored or assisted more than Erling Haaland this year. So, and, and, that, and, and this is the thing. This is Erling Haaland having a bad season by the ridiculous standards that he set. But an Erling Haaland poor season in terms of the way he's being criticised still has him at top of the pile of goals and assists out of the top three leagues in Europe. And it has him in the top three from the top five leagues in Europe. So for me, I think the level of criticism towards him is just over-egged. It's too much. It's people that didn't like him when he signed for City, said he was going to flop, were made to look stupid. They're just they're coming out from under their rocks now to have a little pop at him, personally. I, I think it's wrong. And someone here says and, and stats, stats, stats. Yeah, stats matter, my friend, because you're a Barca fan. And if you literally halved Messi's stats, you wouldn't have had the success that you had in that time, my friend. So some statistics... Like scoring goals and winning games are the most important thing. Usually important. Let's not be yeah, stupid. Yeah, now. if you're a striker, the goals matter. You know what I mean? That's a stat. It's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that matters. Yeah, and I think if we look at if we look back to Salah, right when he first came in the league and he had an, a brilliant first season, oh yeah, he was amazing. He got all the plaudits, and it was the next season. And when when he didn't start to live up to the amazing stuff he'd done, but still was incredible, he was getting over criticized. It's the same pattern. So I think if we look at it and say, oh, why doesn't Haaland get as much Haaland get as much criticism as Salah? Salah's been here a very long time, and familiarity breeds contempt. And Haaland is going to find the same thing, and people are going to it's going to it's only going to ramp up for him now because of how much plaudits he got on the first season and everything that you said of people that were proved wrong and that went over the top, and it was the same with. Salah, so it's just how it goes. <laughs> Sorry to laugh at you. Jordan here says, no, Terry, you're lying. Messi would have created the goals or dribble parties, teammates for, for pre-assists. Yeah, more stats. So, um, yeah. It's, pre-assists, it's, yeah, exactly. Of all the yeah, stats, it, it, exactly. Like, there, there is a, when Haaland's a goal scorer, the goals, again, if you just look at pure goals scored, he's still third behind Mbappe and Harry Kane this year. But... Lataro Martinez is fourth on 26. Then you've got Gurassi on 26. Uh, number seven, Oli Watkins, actually, 24 goals a season. Mo Salah's number eight. So, like, Oli Watkins is what we're all calling an absolute sensational season. And he's still and he's still behind Erling Haaland that was saying he's having a poor one. And, listen, is he as good on the ball? No. I mean, I just think he's having a bad time at the minute. When you always have to use stats to defend him. But this is the this is or not using stats to defend Erling Haaland. It's a good challenge. I'm not sitting here and saying that oh, he's an amazing technical footballer. I think his hold up play is good. I'd rate it as good at the elite end of the spectrum. I think he is a very, very good football player overall and a world class finisher. But Erling Haaland's job is to score goals, and he delivers. Now he needs the majority of his chances created for him that is what he has always been and nobody has denied that why suddenly when he's 23 years of age after four or five years at the top 
Are we suddenly hyper-focused on other areas of his game? We know that wasn't his game. He is an out-and-out goal scorer. That is what he does, and that is what he should be ultimately judged on. Because he isn't scoring as much goals in the league. He scores 19 goals in the... Terry, the thing about it, he scored 19 goals in the league for a, the best team, as you say, that tried to create a lot of chances for him. The guy is, I think he's the only guy from the top strikers that actually doesn't exceed his XG. He actually scores less than we actually should score. He's a brilliant goal scorer, and he was last season. But he is warranted a little bit of criticism this season because he's underperforming. So how he should, He's under a little bit of criticism because he's underperforming. I, 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 I I, I agree. No, I, 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 even I, I by agree. other guys, 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 Mo, even I agree. I agree with the criticism. Standards. I agree with the criticism, but the, the the words people are using, the way they're describing him, you cannot be two, two years over the top. You, you three know. or four years, three or four years running, you can't be one of the top goal scorers and top assisters, who's won his team so many points across Europe. Be one of the be one of the spearhead main integral parts of a treble winning team. And being called League Two footballer, being called a bang average footballer, having your footballing, having football removed from your ability to score goals is crazy to me. It's like if you're in boxing, professional boxing, not amateur boxing, if someone's an average boxer, but they've got such amazing knockout power, you, you, you don't separate it. Now, yeah. when you're putting them into a fight with somebody who's going to win, you might say, well, if someone boxes behind the jab and stays away from that big right, I think he'll outbox him. That's fair enough because he's a better boxer. But it doesn't stop him from being an elite level boxer still because there's more than one way to skin a cat. And I think that's a problem with, with some football fans. They want every... If he had it their way, they would the, the people that say football's entertainment would ruin football if they had it their way because they want everybody to look and play in exactly the same way and it would all become very much... It'd be like watching a bunch of robots out there. You want that variety. You need uh, uh, an Mbappe to... Uh, versus a Harlan, you know, versus, versus a, an Ollie Watkins, versus a Foden in terms of these debates, because it gives us a great variety for our footballing palette, as opposed to every player looking the same, sounding the same, running the same, shooting the same, dribbling the same. How boring would football be? If it was that, it'd be crazy. It really would be crazy. So you like Erling yeah. Haaland because he provides something different? No, not per se, but it's the... It's what's always been in football. It's the tapestry of football is that there's always been different types of strikers, different types of midfielders, and you bring them yeah. all together and make teams. And then teams look a little bit. We're at the same time. We're going through an era where the same people are calling out Haaland. This is the mad bit. Are calling out, why is everybody trying to play out the back? Why is everybody inverting fullbacks? Why is everyone playing the same way? It's so boring. Mm -hmm. Well, imagine all the players played the same way as well. And all the systems were the same. You'd ruin football. Genuinely, you'd ruin football. You need that variety. Yeah. And calling someone that scores at the rate and the level that Haaland does, an average football player, for me is, at best, it's disingenuous. At worst, you're being a prick. Yeah, Listen, uh, pretty much. I mean, it's pretty good. Yeah, come on. It's, 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 I, I actually think if Erling Haaland in the season was 22 goals or 23 goals in the Premier League, I think for a player that plays for Manchester City that your only job is to score goals, well, it depends. If Man City win the league and Phil Foden steps up, I think it has been to be for him a disappointing season. I know that people will say, but they might win the league and they might win the triple. For his standards and what he offers and the team he plays for. I 22 think, goals in 38 games, though, Mo. So, I mean, for, like, Erling Haaland, for Erling Haaland playing for Manchester City, that's a disappointment. You that's have to always, listen, Dominic Solanke ending in, in 15 goals or something or 18 goals might be tougher. Mm. Then and I know that this is oh, this might be like a dig at Holland. It's not because last season what he did is out of this world. The same as what Mo Salah came playing right wing and scored 34 goals no, or 32 no, goals. I, it's out I, of this world. I'm not expecting you. the same no, every I, I, I'm not I, expecting I, 38 goals every season. No, no, I agree with you. If he gets 23 goals and someone like Dominic Solanke gets 22, I'd say Dominic Solanke had a bit better season than him. All of that I think is fair criticism. But it's this average footballer. He shouldn't even be in the Premier League. Nonsense. That's I can't. Garbage. I can't. I, you're, you're an idiot if you think that. You really are. And this is how I know these people are capping. So like I said, they're either being a prick or they're being disingenuous. Because if he was available on the transfer market tomorrow, everybody, every single one of us would want him. Every yeah. single club would want to buy him. Every single fan would change their mind and go, actually, I've watched this compilation and he's really quite good. Can it's I ask you something jealousy. then for this? It's for predominantly this. jealousy of Can how good he is in his arrival. If he's available tomorrow, do you think Bar Munich still had a cane and buy him? 
Harry Kane. No, they wouldn't right now because they've got a guy that can score at the same level. But my, okay, most clubs are one. I'm going to gonna follow up. I'm going to let you finish. Do you yeah, think? I think, if... I, think well, I think Bayern Munich right now would probably go with stick with Kane. But then you got to look at Kane's age. Okay, a that's a different Lundin story. I'm talking about right now. I'm not 23. By the way, Erling I'm Haaland. I said, right that, I said that yeah. on your show last season. I said Erling Haaland will learn. He will learn how to be better at hold up play. He will learn how to be better on the ball. I've seen Diego Milito develop on his 30. I've seen Diego Drogba develop on his 26, 27. I've seen players develop late in their yeah. career. If I'm it was a straight spot, at the moment, they would do it. I think they'd do it. If they, if Man because City of the said, age only or because of the ability. What about hey, Lewandowski? Hey, do you think, hey, right do you think now. Lewandowski... Harry Kane, Harry Kane at 21 or 23, both same age, it's a different conversation, but we are where we are now. So I still think, yeah, Bayern Munich's a good shout because they've got Harry Kane. But Barcelona, <laughs> Lewandowski? Barcelona tried to sign him when he was going to City, so yes. Yeah, but they have Lewandowski now. Do you believe yeah, but Lewandowski, Lewandowski not the same Lewandowski he was? They would, definitely, they would definitely trade up for Haaland, 100%. Anyway, that's the point. Real Madrid have made inquiries about him already. They have no so, they have his solo as a striker. Or something. <laughs> yeah, every I think everybody would be interested in that guy. Uh, so like, many Man United fans that are criticizing him, right? I remember when City were were, were linked with him. Man United would you replace him with uh, Hoyland? Would you Terry, replace Hoyland? You replace for Hoyland Harland? with him, Terry. Honest to God, on first come day on, of Eid, Terry. On first day of Eid, Terry. First day of a blessed day. Yes, Terry I would. Of on course the I would. Uh, in reality, I would. Yes, yes, I would. I would. You think he's a better footballer than Hoyland? I think I think Hoyland will be better at the hold up play element of the game than him. But I don't think Hoyland will ever be able to score the with the frequency of goals that that Harlan gets most years in, most years out. So um, the, the way I view it is this. You could build a team that can. You should build a team that facilitates for Harlan, as opposed to a, a striker that's facilitating for inside forwards a little bit more. So you just have to build your system where it's going to, where he's going to be the the, the, the the sort of the head of the arrow, as it were. But yes, um, I would, and I think most Man United fans would, um, if they're being totally, totally honest. But um, in terms of the game last night, who has the advantage now going into the second leg? Man City, Real Madrid. Who would you, who would you say, Dan? Yes, yeah, it's. it's... It's a tough one. I think it's fairly even, but um, I would say Man City because um, second legs are at the Etihad, right? Yeah. Um, so they they have got that home advantage, and as as someone who's uh, now experienced watching my team in Europe, um, it is it is it, you you as a fan you do want to see your team get the second leg at home. When we got that against Leverkusen, we were celebrating. You know, it, it does make a difference if you can get the score line. You know, either a draw or a narrow loss. Take that at home. The 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 atmosphere ramps up, um, and you've got that slight advantage. Yeah, so I, I think it's advantage Man City for sure. It's no, going to be tough though because they never count this Real Madrid team out. They're unbelievable. It's yeah, for everybody criticised Kyle Walker over the season, and everybody that said, "Oh, Kyle Walker makes a lot of mistakes." If Kyle Walker played for Manchester City yesterday, they would have won the game. They would have won the game. It's as simple as that. Um, Manchester City have the advantage. I think Manchester City goes through and unless something freaky happens in the game. Real Madrid are good. It's not full on. It's not done yet. But I think Man City have the advantage because they go at home. And Man City have not lost a game at home in about 60 games, people. In about 60 games. So who says they're going to lose now? Yeah, Real Madrid can sit deep. But Real Madrid don't have defenders to sit deep. Real Madrid will have to mm. open up a little bit. I think Man City will win this. And they will go to the semi-final. However, we have to highlight a couple of things about yesterday. And I'm not sure if people want to hear this. Rodri wasn't great yesterday. Wasn't great at all. Diaz, ball watching. Akanji, ball watching. Stones has a, has a, has a little bit of uh, like good game overall, but he wasn't great. City's defense is wide open. Conceding three and the amount of chances that Real Madrid created yesterday... Pep Guardiola, and I'm going to say this again. Until this current moment, Pep Guardiola doesn't know his lineup. He doesn't. He doesn't know the right combination. He's trying so hard. Foden in the right, Foden in the center. Bernardo Silva, Kovacic, Rodri. Who's playing right? Who's inverting? He doesn't know. He doesn't know. Rodri, people say he's exhausted. He needs a break. But they don't have any replacement. They have lost the games without him. So who says that they won't lose the, game if, the games if he doesn't play? Like yesterday, they gave the ball away. To be honest with you, I actually think that Man City is still trying to find the right combination. Is this the time 
the Man City kick on, maybe, but I don't see it still. The, the, they aren't playing tough team, but I still think they were going to go through. But Rema did have a chance of maybe, maybe getting a draw, getting to penalties or taking taking them to extra time. But this Man City team conceded, to, I don't know the XG, I didn't check it, but I'm sure it's four for Real Madrid, something like that yesterday. Man City's defense is wide open. Again, it's Crystal Palace wide open. Yesterday was wide open. Again, it's Brentford before one on ones. People need to look at that and say, Pep Guardiola, Man City fans complain about this. Pep Guardiola isn't finding the right combination, to be honest. He isn't. Pep is the guy who isn't finding the right combination. If after spending 250 million euros, but 250 million pounds. Hmm. They're praising Gavardio for his goal yesterday, which is brilliant. So you bought a defender, so you might need to buy another defender for 70 million oh, to God. actually defend them. And uh, maybe uh, Gavardio needs to play left wing, right? Maybe. Do you think um, some of the injuries they've had, then it obviously it's a bit of an excuse, has, has sort of played a part in him not having that settled team and, and discovering that team? Because you look at, especially the back line, you know. It, it seems to have changed up a lot of time out of necessity. Yeah. Um, and I think it did. It did. Have... it did. It did then. The problem with it, it's part of the team. Man City, now you're talking about injuries, but we don't give the same leeway for other clubs when they have injuries. We just don't. We don't give the same leeway. Man City have the quality squad. They might not have the numbers and they might have not 22, 23 players, but they have good quality players. So the likes of Akanji, the likes of Diaz, who's having an to be honest, Diaz is not having a great season at all. Mm -hmm. Diaz, by the way, Rodri, when I said Rodri isn't having a good season, he's having an okay season by his standards. Um, Phil Foden, by the way, yesterday, which is something that I know that Terry would mention that Phil Foden stepped up yesterday when it mattered, but he wasn't great before he scored the goal. He wasn't, by the way, he, he wasn't good. Uh, Erling Haaland wasn't there. I think they were saved by individual abilities yesterday. In terms of like a team, I think as a team, Man City yesterday didn't play well. I don't think they but played that, well at all. I, I, Individual I players, you because you can't tell me then that Pep Guardiola in the lecture before the game he said, and by the way, we're all playing to get Gavardio in his right foot outside the area, top bins. No, I don't course. think that's what I, 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 like. I, I, he didn't sit in the lecture I, saying that he didn't. No, but yeah, we I think I think with cup games, you know, they are tend to be cagey affairs that you do have to look for those those clutch moments, you know, and those clutch players a lot of the time when you're in the, these later stages. Um and you're gonna have you're gonna have those games. Do you know what I mean? And I think it's right. I think it's fair to point out and say, yeah, look, it weren't the best performance. Obviously look, and you can look at that at both sides. I do think it's a shame that we didn't get to see this game as the final Real Madrid versus Man City. I think we're going to see Man City versus Atletico Madrid, um, which is probably going to be uh, not as entertaining. I think this would have been a different and, and more exciting game as a final, which is good, really. I, uh, yeah, you don't, you don't think that Real Madrid could come back at all? Uh, no, I will. I think they can because they're Real Madrid. We've seen them do it time and time again against the likes of Liverpool, but I don't yeah, think they will. I, I so I think Man City will get some. They, they can do it. I mean, they'll. I think they'll get the same level of counter attack opportunities because City have been affording those opportunities of counter attack to everybody. I think Real Madrid were wasteful when they were on top in terms of in that first half. They got back in the game, went two, two, two They went two one up, and they probably had four or five counter attacks again in that second half. They didn't even all end in shots where they should have done better. Vinicius Junior should have made it 3-1. Then two goals in five minutes from City that were just out of this world. And oh, again, th their equaliser was absolutely sumptuous uh, as well. But I feel like they've got that third goal and then shut City out and gone into this. I feel like they should have gone into it 3-1. That's how it felt in terms of the, the pattern of the game. But we all know that football doesn't always work that way. City are the favourites, but Real Madrid are going to have counter-attack opportunities. And it's just about delivering in those in those moments really so yeah i mean they can do it real madrid because the, the one thing they have this season compared to last year is and i asked the question on, on on straight facts yesterday and it was a genuine question because i haven't watched enough of real madrid this year plus i wanted to see them back up against city again is last year they were just done not just on quality on the ball but it was so much more power, speed, strength, acceleration from City. I just felt like Real Madrid looked a bit old, a little bit lethargic, a little bit slow. Where last night, it was just different. It really was different. So they're going to have a much better chance this time, this time round than they did 
than they did last year. I don't see them getting battered up 4-1 or anything. I think it's 4-1 last year or anything crazy like those numbers. I think it's going to be a much closer affair. But if I, if I was going to put a bet on this, I would side with Man City because they're the best team in the world. They are at home. KDB will probably be fit for that game as well. And when KDB's fit, he comes alive. Haaland comes alive. They've got Foden, who's typically been in great form the last few months and is scoring goals. So, yeah, I would I would edge ever so slightly with with Man City on this one. But uh, it's yeah. going to be... Oh, so it was 4-0 last season, was it? There we go, 4-0. Yeah, oh, I, don't yeah. See it, I don't see it being 4-0 um, this year, but um, I, I do see City City winning the game personally. But it's going to be an amazing game, irrespective. That and the Arsenal game on at the same time is going to be amazing. And in relation to the Arsenal game, gents, I mean, we, we will speak about how Arsenal played, how Arsenal performed and, and, and what we think about the tie. But obviously, two hugely contentious decisions in the game. First one, Barcelona. That's for Barcelona. Bayern Munich. Should have had a penalty when a whistle blew the whistle to referee blew the whistle to say take the goal kick. Raya passes the ball to Gabriel, who picks it up, puts it down, and passes it to him. Uh, Tuchel cool fuming about it. Rivals of Arsenal obviously stating it should be. There have been a few kind of ex pro referees that have said. There was no advantage to Arsenal. They weren't trying to gain an advantage. It was sort of an honest, innocent mistake. A bit like I heard one guy on the radio say, it's like sometimes you can foul throw it and the throw, throw goes to the other team. Sometimes you might go to throw it and it accidentally slips out your hand and it's a foul throw, but the ref lets you take it again because it was more of an error than you trying to foul throw it. So I've heard like both sides. But what do, how do you boys see it? Should Bayern Munich have been given a penalty in your opinion? I think I think this whole advantage argument, I think, is a bit silly. You know, there's rules in the game. Is if if you break those rules, there are punishments. You know, in the forms of penalties and free kicks and things like that, in place. Because then you have to sit there, and I mean, obviously, this one's a clear where you can say, yeah, okay, they haven't gained an advantage, but you know, it's the same like the back pass rule. Sometimes, you know, is. You know, you don't always get an advantage of that. I think Bayern, I see a clip of Bayern getting, there was a throw in last season where they didn't get an advantage, but they um, was going to take a throw in and then the other player sort of put it on the line. And then when the player picked up and took it over the line, they gave a throw in, I think, to the other team. So there's precedent for it. There's precedent. It, at the end of the day, mm. the ref's blown the whistle. The keepers played the ball. The ball is now in play. And then he's picked it up. So yeah, there's no immediate advantage, but the rules are the rules. Do we this advantage thing is mad? We have to determine everything. Yeah, well, there's no advantage. There's nothing so. in there's well, nothing, the, in the law, nothing in the law like this, by the way. There's nothing in the law. There's no law that says that. This is, about this is some referees making making it up about taking advantage yeah. and stuff like this. It's just not there's yeah, nothing saving actually face. in the law. Yeah. But I don't know, but I don't know. If we're sitting here clutching into this to be in a penalty for Bayern Munich, uh, I think we shouldn't watch football, Lawless. I'm sorry. Apologies. Like, uh, Gabriel made a mistake, yes. But, again, by the way, when is the last time we've seen goal kicks being played because of a whistle? Like, when have we seen that? Never. Uh, goal um, kicks don't play because of a whistle, because there's no 10 yards and, and stuff like that. Gabriel didn't know that Raya played it. Gabriel saw that Raya is passing him the ball so he can play it to him, which happens all the games. I think people are clutching to straws here. I think it might have been a penalty if you go by the law, but I don't think it's a penalty at all. Like, Because literally, who said that the goal kick is taken by the whistle? Who said that? I have never seen a goal kick taken because the referee whistles. Goal kicks. Are I, I've kicks. seen it. I've seen it many no, times. I literally no, see no, it when we was no. playing. Um, goal at kicks home. aren't taken with the whistle, Lawless, and you know what I'm talking about. Goalkeepers put the ball and they play the ball, right? Nobody waits for the whistle for a goal kick. So Gabriel didn't think that. Oh my God, this whistle is for the goal kick. He, he never thought about that. And I thought Gabriel was thinking that Raya was passing in the ball. I'm using common sense. I'm using common... I get what you guys are saying. I get what everyone is saying in the media. But if we're clutching into this to be a penalty in a game like this, I think football should be done. Are we Are we kidding ourselves? What is this? Uh, Gabriel picked the ball because Raya passed him the ball to play the back. That's what Gabriel understood. Yeah, give a penalty. Give Bayern a penalty. Yes, yes, do. Give Bayern... And you want, the game, you want a quarter final in the Champions League to be played like this? 
Oh. But who cares if it's the quarterfinal of the Champions League or, you know, I Tuesday don't get it. League day one. Early, a, like. a penalty should not be given for something like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There, there has to be some something in the rules, isn't it? Same, but this is what I'm saying. Otherwise, you know, if, if it doesn't matter, then why does it matter that you have to throw in a certain way? If, the, if there is a the law, they have to change it now. They have to change it. I, I mean, they, they, it hasn't been changed. Lo, 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 who's lo, saying Mo's a liar? Show the XG, bro. You're a freeloader in the chat. So stop calling me a liar. We never, I never talked about XG yet, right? Stop calling me a liar, freeloader. Please send the freaking super chat before calling me out, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, the, the thing is, listen, I, I listen, I'm I am more siding with Lawless. I get the spirit of the game argument. I understand that it would be gutting if you're a gooner, anyone, you can see the goal like that tomorrow night, Lawless, in the Europa League. You, you're gonna be angry at your player for making the mistake, but you will see it through the lens of it was an honest, innocent mistake that you were trying to gain zero footballing advantage from. However, I have to stay 100 on this, and I don't want to be a hypocrite. And I'm someone that hates, and I, we're going to get into the Arsenal one in a minute, where certain decisions are not given because of the occasion. I believe you should manage a game, a referee a game, whether it's a Champions League final or the opening day of the season. A yellow card is a yellow card, a penalty is a penalty, a red card is a red card. And they should be, you should referee, the we still players don't play the occasion, play the game. So why are we telling referees to referee the occasion and not the game? I, I don't quite get that logic. So for me, I I think that the penalty should have been given. I think the referee has got this absolutely wrong. It wasn't the only thing he got wrong on the night, but I remember they were talk it's his first ever game at that level, and I think he's had an absolute mayor. Um, Can Chris I give you a simple example before you go Chris, through? Chris, Chris here says we do that on every single goal kick. I mean, this is the thing though. After, I mean, I'm gonna have to start listening out for it now. I'm gonna have to start listening out for it. Do, do the, no, no, the I want to get no, before you go on. I want to give you an example. I need I'm to sorry, listen to it. I just don't know. I have to go and listen. I want to give you an example. If a player is, is, is taking a throw in and his teammate is coming to him and he gives him the ball, he doesn't play the ball, he gives him the ball on the pitch and it touches the pitch. That his teammates, his teammate is thinking that, listen, I'm giving you the ball to play another throw in. Should it be a foul throw? Because he threw the ball in the uh, in the pitch wrong, even if the rest pre whistled. A player is taken. I'm gonna give you the exact same example. A player on a throw in, the referee whistles. The player okay. instead of taking I'll, the throw in, he's it. throwing the ball okay. with his teammate to, to to take the, the throw in. Is that a foul throw? I'll, I'll, I'll answer. Like a it. great way to waste time, Mo. <laughs> yeah, I'll answer it for you, Mo. You know if I'm right. That's why you went to waste time. No, I'm gonna no, say no. I'm story. not saying you're wasting time. I'm saying that's a that's a great way to waste time because you can go. Probably so. Actually, I don't want to. Yeah, you get a yellow card for wasting time, but you don't give a foul okay. call. You give so a yellow card for wasting Mo, time. Mo, Mo. Okay, so in your example, I think the referee would probably say, "Hurry up, take the throw." Might book somebody, but if he threw it to his teammate in the legal way, you make a throw, and his teammate picked it up, the referee would give him ball. Yeah, hundred percent. Raya, Raya passed the ball to 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 to, to, Gab to Gabriel after stopping it. Listened to the whistle, played the ball. Gabriel then stopped it and put it down again. The Bayern Munich player saw it because they appealed. So I, I think that your example holds water. But I th again, it's one of those things. You would feel gutted if you can see that penalty. But if it was the other way around, I'd be keeping the same energy. And I'd be turning around and saying, Arsenal should have had a penalty. I don't know about Lawless. But maybe the spirit of the game would come in for Lawless there. But I would still say penalty. So I'm, I'm not going to be a hypocrite. Isn't it, isn't it, subjective? Joking, isn't it way, but... subjective to what we Why? think, Raya? Is intention or was Raya giving the ball to Gabriel to play? Isn't it subjective to intention now? Isn't it subjective to the intention yeah, but, but, but of the That's why you don't go. Wasn't right. it that's Raya? Go Maybe right. Raya was given the ball. Maybe Raya was given the ball to Gabriel. Good point. Subjective. Because, because a lot, but a lot of a lot of fouls and penalties, you know, you can't go on intent. You just go by is that a foul or not? Is not. Has he tried to do this or has he tried to do that? It's a foul because of I've heard, what I've, heard that. I've had a lot. I've had a lot of conversation about intent today. Um, and and look intent for me, content. this is what I would say as well. Though the referee has gone to Tuchel and said, "We're sorry, we've made a mistake." Mm. The official refereeing bodies have all said that this is why, as well. I understand Mo's argument, but if the ref would have come out and just said it was a it was an error, as in it, I, I I I don't they didn't know the ball was in play. 
then I think the defence holds more water. The fact the referee said, no, it should have been a penalty, I think makes it a little bit less debatable and more about his, his incompetence there. Uh, this here says, uh, Terry just bias about because he is expecting United to make it to the Europe, Euro, European Cup if Arsenal goes further. The referee... Le- how am I being who am I, how am I being biased I towards know. Arsenal and Man United when I'm defending Bayern Munich? Is this copium because I'm not on Arsenal's side on this argument? And you're like, oh my god, Terry said what we didn't think he would. Um, that's weird. How am I being biased? <laughs> um, how would I even be biased towards Arsenal anyway? Um, yeah. but yeah, look, it, I, it, the guy sorry, is saying it's a penalty. Wake up, African cat. No. We don't. I'm saying it's a penalty. It's a penalty. Yeah. I'm yeah. the one who said it's not a it's not a penalty. I don't know where I'm being biased uh, towards. <laughs> If it happened to Arsenal, though, their fans, all these fans are getting upset because we're saying it's a penalty. They would be screaming blue murder. But, but the Arsenal. same the same could be said vice versa. Because we all know if Harry Kane went through in the, 80, in the 95th minute and the exact same scenario took place, I would hazard a guess that 80%, 85% of the people saying it was no penalty to Arsenal would all be saying... That was a penalty, and Bayern Munich should have had it. And I want to get your your boys' opinions on 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 the Saka incident. Obviously, he runs through on goal. He takes the ball around Neuer. Neuer sticks out his right foot and puts it forward and out to the side. Saka tries to get past it. Their legs clash. Saka falls over. No penalty given. How did you interpret that one, Dan? Did, did you think Arsenal were hard done by in the dying moments, or fair <laughs> news? You, you, know, you, I know you kind of know the way the say, way Terry but... put it, bro, bro. The way Terry, the way Terry kind of explained the situation, you're like, oh, it's a hundred percent a penalty. There's no the now, now, he, yeah. He now put, I need you, to, you see the story he put out there. That language oh, there. Because I don't think he tried to get past the keeper. Yeah, thank you. When you look at how this man put his leg out. It makes no logical sense that if the keeper wasn't there, your leg would be in that position. You're flaring your leg out to the side to catch the keeper's leg. Keeper comes out, making himself big, arms stretched out, legs stretched out for anticipating the shot, right? And Saka could easily, easily just go around the keeper and stick it in the back of the net. He doesn't have any confidence in his ability to do that. So he thinks the easier option is to do is to try and get caught by the keeper, make the foul happen. And that, if that was given in the dying moments of the game, that would have been criminal. That would have been just to end the game like that of a player making a foul happen. I, I, there's no way, again, if, if if you'd be on the end of that, you'd be we'd all be sick to our stomachs. If we saw a player, and the thing about Kane, Kane is one of the biggest divers in football. Right, no, 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 two ways about it. So it's hard to even defend Kane when he he does do stuff like that. But that I can't. Anyone that's that thinks that's a penalty, I, I have to understand the logic. And I've seen some Arsenal fans justify it. And I, honestly, I don't see how. I don't see how you can even. I don't think it's a penalty. penalty. I think both legs of Saka. He jumped into my. I don't think he dived. He initiated the contact by mm-hmm. jumping both legs towards Neuer and instead of changing his uh, um, his direction he literally saw Neuer and decided to jump with both legs and hit the right leg into Neuer yes Neuer's leg was out but Saka didn't need to jump with both legs to go towards Neuer I think if this was given on the pitch it would it would not have been overturned but because it wasn't given I think that there is no reason for them to overturn however I actually think that the referees, the VAR room should have asked the referee to go check on the contact. The reason why, because there is contact. It should not have taken three seconds to check. He should have gone into the uh, the monitor to check it. But I, I'm watching the angle from behind. Saka literally went, and, and this is how I'm going to explain it. He went with the ball left, and then he jumped to the right side to hit Neuer. Why are you going to the right side? And don't tell me he's trying to change direction. He isn't. He isn't. Okay. He so jumped I, into a, that's my opinion, by the way. I, and I hear your opinions. And, and listen, I, I think it was such an in, it's been such an interesting penalty because I've heard I've heard some wild takes. Yours, your, your two hold a lot of water, in my opinion. And I'm I disagree, but I totally get. I don't want to sound condescending, uh, but I'm patronizing. But I get where you're both coming from with it. But I've heard some wild stuff today. I've heard. 
Neuer was standing still, which is incorrect. I've heard Neuer didn't move his right leg forward and out to the side, which is incorrect. And the element of Saka trying to buy the foul, the reason that I don't believe it is because we know what divers look like. And I, I, haven't, I didn't prepare a graphic for this, but if you just Google, and I'm, I'm sure I could do it now and share the screen, footballers diving, right? So if he's, if he's, uh, you don't initiate contact, would we agree, just, just for education purposes, would you agree when someone initiates contact, they're going to go down, right? You're not just going to make contact and stay on your feet. Would you generally would agree with that in a penny? For a penny? Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you so when you when you when you see players that do this, Harvey Elliott at the weekend, Harry Kane is a master at this. Rooney was very good at it. When you slow it down, typically just before that contact, you already see that the angle of the dive coming in. So when they get hit, they go up in the air, and it looks more authentic. Does that make sense? So that's why when I look at the replay, I don't think he initiated. And I'll tell you what's to, to, to why. I'm going I'm to show these on, on, on screen in really slow motion uh, down here now. And hopefully you guys can you, you guys can sort of see this. Um, I want to put it into a better box. I'm going to put it into this one. It won't look good in the background, but there we go. So as, as this happens for me, this is why, right? I, I don't think he means it. So angles are important. You look at the goalkeeper coming out. You, as Saka touches that ball, the goalie's only got eyes on one thing, and that's the ball. The goalkeeper's trying to win the ball. People saying he wasn't. He's looking at it. As that ball goes to the goalkeeper's right and to our left, as we can see it, he swings his foot for it and misses it. Saka doesn't go towards the goalkeeper in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion. He's just moving in the same direct direction. If the goalkeeper's leg doesn't come out, there isn't contact there. Okay. But I get what you mean by the way. Look, I get how it looks. The other element to me as well that I think is another looking... angle. Yeah, this is the yeah, angle. Yeah, so again, so this this angle though, this angle I agree with. As this comes in, I'm going to drag it, and not let it play because of copyright. As it comes in, look at this, the jump. Uh, both legs. Yeah. Why is he jumping with both okay, legs? Again, again, again. I'll tell you why he's do doing that. In my personal opinion, okay. When you look at it from the other angle, you can see that the when, and there's also another angle that I don't have the video footage from where you see it. The goalkeeper cuts the goalkeeper's cutting across his path. So he if he doesn't jump, he's gonna run straight into him. I think he's trying to stay up. And the reason why I think he's trying to stay on his feet, okay, is when you first ball it more and he gets caught here. If you're diving, that looks so bad. yeah, but no, but this is why I don't think it do you know why I think it looks bad? It's because he's not trying to cheat. And I'll tell you as to why. Normally, by now, if you're diving. Why has he not arched his back? Why did he? Why does he get caught? Like, and please answer this question for me, boys. Okay. Why does he? Why does he get caught and continue to try and run, but then trip himself up? So for me, when someone dives, and you just mentioned Harry Kane. Harry Kane is a serial diver, but whenever that leg comes out and he makes sure that there's contact, they all go over. Why has he tried to continue running after? creating huge contact that's the one element about i don't understand why he's cheating he gets the contact he wants but then he doesn't dive he tries to stay on his feet which lawless i agree with you then makes it look a bit dodgy why not just go down he, well, he parts his left foot on the ground i don't know if i can say he's definitely can try to continue running but like what he's done is left his leg out intentionally and you can see it he sees he sees Anoya coming towards him. He can see that. And he's just left what he's done is as his legs ran, rather than trying, he could have easily dribbled around the keeper there. Easily. Just shift his body weight to his left, how? go around him. How on the goalkeeper? How if the goalkeeper's come across him at that spin? You can't show real speed. But at real speed, no. the goalkeeper swung his right foot out. How is he meant to get around that and still try and stay in possession of the ball? Yeah, but look at the way look at the way he's facing uh, Saka. If his leg, what if his leg isn't dangled out far to his right, he, he doesn't get caught. Or maybe you know you could say you could argue well he might get clipped on, on the foot. Um, but the fact that he's left his leg out, there's no reason for him to do that. Why is he? Why is he? Yeah, you that? have to differentiate between so, so, diving. So what, what we're now, so okay, the one thing you don't see in any of the footage is him moving towards the goalkeeper. One of the angles looks like he does. Yes. But from the front angle, you can see the goalkeeper's moving his leg towards him. Which front angle, Terry? I think you're only you're only watching your angle, Terry. 
no, like, no. This, this, this front, this front, to, right? hang on, yeah, hang on, but this one doesn't show it, Terry. No, yes, it does. Hang it on. Doesn't show the distance. Hang it on, doesn't it, show the distance, Terry. We, hang on a minute, but we know the distance because the other angle shows it. But in this, from this angle here, we clearly see Saka moves the ball, and and it's, it's the goalkeeper's foot that comes towards Saka because he's trying to win the ball. And what and the I'm other saying one is, doesn't. Hang on the minute, other hang one on doesn't. Let, let me finish. If it, the other angle doesn't show what the goalkeeper's doing, but this one does. No, this one does. And the point I'm making is that we can clearly see the goalkeeper's going for the ball. If the goalie, like people are claiming, was stationary and just made himself big, why does his leg move forward? What's because he's in motion. Done? He's in motion. But, but so just because he's in motion and then hits Saka doesn't make it not a foul. He didn't hit Saka. Hang on. Hit Saka. Hang on. Hit the, yeah, no, he did. They both gone for the ball. You were in it that way. Hang on. You were in it that way. Let me finish my sentence. 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 You understand where I'm coming from? Saka wins the ball. Yes. He has the ball. His position. Does Saka win the ball in the 50-50? Yes or no? Between what? Between him and the keeper? Yes. Yeah, he he has the yeah, ball. Yeah, the keeper yeah, he has the ball. Yes. Right. So he wins. So for me, he wins the ball. The goalkeeper's foot then extends into into Saka's path because he misses the ball, and then they clash into each other. I don't understand why that's now not. I don't even understand why does Saka have a responsibility to move his leg when he's made. Why? Let me finish the question then. Why does Saka have the responsibility to move his leg when it's the goalkeeper that's late to the 50-50? Can we respond now? Because actually the difference is we think there is a distance between the goalkeeper and Saka is the one who's moving towards the moving link with Manuel Neuer. That's what we think, Terry. The angle that I just sent you that you showed the second angle right. showed that Saka. You showed one angle that shows that Manuel Neuer they're is both, on they're both the move, They're both moving. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm interrupting because they're both moving towards each other because it's a 50-50. Yeah, but let me, let me tell they're you. They're both moving towards each other. Neither a stationary mode. Yes. That there's a difference between the ball went left and Saka still went to the right side to go and hit Manuel Neuer's leg. So but he, he wouldn't have, but he, the but he wouldn't, but he wouldn't have hit Manuel Neuer's leg. If Manuel Neuer doesn't move his right leg forward to try and touch the ball and miss it, he doesn't touch Manuel Neuer's leg. If someone kicks the ball away and jumps into another player, it's not a free kick. You initiate he doesn't jump into it. But if, that's if what Manu, we're saying. Hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I don't want to dwell on I get, I get, where, you're, I get where you're coming from. I, I don't want to dwell onto this. because. No, hang on a minute. But if Manuel Neuer stays there where, where his feet are planted, instead of moving his leg forward, he doesn't clash into him. Manuel Neuer can't just stand in someone's way while stepping forward. That's a foul. It's called obstruction. Guys, he literally if, jumped. Saka jumped into him. No, he yes. didn't. Very he, obvious. He, he, no, it's not. It's not He's, obvious. He's he's like right it's obvious, bro. He jumped right side and the ball went left. I know Neuer is moving. I'm not disputing what you're saying, Terry. For Saka is moving. Hang on a minute. Saka here. You can see Saka. He's moving to the to the left, mate. No, That's... but the other angle shows literally he's moving to the right. But he's moving to the left and forward at the same time. So he's moving in a diagonal of motion, but he is not moving to the right, Mo. I am looking. Can you show the other angle then? Maybe I'm... Oh, am, am I the blind? other angle... The other angle that is, shows you he's going right, left as well. He's this is behind the, the other goal. angle. Really shows he's going or, is right, or right. Is that left or right? Is that left or right? Now for here I can't say I can't see, but for here look left. Yes, go ahead. So I, I answered you. I answered you. It looks like he's going left. Show so, the other angle now. That can you make it bigger. Can we make it bigger? Yes, I can. Let's make it bigger. Yes. How is he going to the right when he's when he's? We know he's body. going to the it's How body. Is he very going to the right. Oh, why is he going to the right? He's turning to the left. What are you talking about? Look, at, look, look at his leg, Terry. He's trying to do some sort of Muay Thai leg kick. Point There's point nothing point natural point. about that. The goalkeeper, the goalkeeper he puts looked, his leg in front Terry, of him. Terry, Terry Saka literally looked I, at Manuel Neuer I disagree, I disagree and jumped boys. into him. Anyway. I disagree. Of course he's going to jump because Manuel Neuer steps in front of him. But this idea that he jumped to the right when he clearly went to the left is crazy. But you still haven't answered my question, boys. Why, if he's diving, does he not dive? Why does he try and stay on his feet? Why doesn't he arch his back? Why doesn't he dive? And no one's answered oh, this question the for contact, me. The contact was We're very strange. The thing. contact is very strange. This contact is very strange. And I just want to understand something, Terry. This is not a dive. There's a difference in dive so, and someone so who's... Do, a, can I, so can, why, can so, let me finish so the sentence. Let me finish the sentence. So the audience will understand me. Why let me finish the sentence. I played football and I know you did too. Let me finish the sentence so the audience can understand. There is a difference in a dive. Kai Havertz dived. 
a dive means there was no contact. There okay. is a difference between a dive and initiating the contact. Hurricane, Jack Grealish are masters in this. They yes. initiate the contact to make yes. it look like they got hit. That's not a yes. dive. Okay. That's not a dive. Yes. The contact happens. Okay. I agree. Right? I completely agree with that, but you're yeah. not answering the, my question. But every time Kane and Grealish do that, they arch their back, they flick their legs, be legs behind them, and they dive. Semantic so if Saka smart. is playing Semantic. for the penalty, please yeah. answer the question, why didn't he dive? Like the we rest just of them do. Into diving techniques. Like, oh, my this is the oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Why can't any... God. Listen, you guys could be right, but why can't you answer the question? Why didn't he dive if he initiated the contact? Because the contact is, stra is very strange. The contact was very tough. The contact Saka's was very... Right. Hang on. That contact, contact was very, very strong. He could have why didn't he leg. dive? Why the didn't he dive? Very, I didn't expect him to have that contact. And his leg is so high. He's hitting man with no his knee. Because yes. Manuel Neuer stepped in front of him. <laughs> yes, but why is Saka's leg it's getting Saka up does, as Saka high doesn't, as need, Saka doesn't need to move his leg. Saka's won the ball. Saka's won the ball. Saka has won the ball. He's about to get possession of the ball and shoot. The goalkeeper puts his leg forward and out to the right, which we can all see on the video, to win it. Misses it. And then it's in front of Saka. Saka then hits into him and falls over and trips up. For me... <laughs> If it happened to your team, if it happens to your team against Leverkusen, I bet you a thousand pound down, Lawless. If that same thing happens, you are screaming penalty. Uh, I hope it Listen. happens. And then we kill no, but, uh, you you know know I hope you it know happens. It. You know it. No, 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 yes, no. Token, Terry, at Terry, the same you're, token. You're spot, on. you're spot on. If it happens, if my player, if Lutaro, Turam, or Barella, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. is a penalty, I might yeah. say, I might sit here. But we aren't Arsenal fans, are we? We're neutral okay, so here. My, so my, if my, if my, it happens, I will if Raya did from that, an, they would be saying it's a penalty. Who, who, sorry? If who? If Raya did that in the game, if it was the other way around, would the Arsenal fair, fans... Fair, fair enough, be? fair enough. My, my view on it is this. I understand about initiating contact if if the goalkeeper's stationary and doesn't move that leg out and Saka hmm. puts, like, moves his leg out in that direction to make contact, 100%, I wouldn't say it was a penalty. But if some, if you're an, an attacker just, and someone puts their leg out in front of you to win the ball, tackle you, and they miss the ball, and, they, and you're about to smash into them, you have no obligation to move out of the way. None. You can just yeah, keep I running don't... into them. That's not. No, that's I, I, I think he's. I, th I think that he's helped make that situation happen. I think that he's raised that his leg. That doesn't make it more. not. That doesn't make it not. He didn't need to raise his leg. The legs in front of him would have hit it anyway. But, I think he's tried to avoid the leg. The reason yeah. why I don't think it's a dive is because he does no diving action that all the other divers... Look at Harvey Elliott the other day. He dragged his leg along the floor, but then it was already half falling before he... I just don't think he dived, but boys... I, I, the... look, whether it's a dive, can, we, can we go to the game now and talk about... Yeah, no, I want to move, move on to... Yeah, on the, on the I, game, who's got the advantage now, Lawless, in your opinion? Um, but I, I think Bayern have it. Like I, I said, similar reasons why I said Man City have the advantage. Um... You know, the Arsenal were the away team now. Our, Matt Bayern Munich didn't have any fans in that ground. Arsenal packed that out, like even in the away end with Arsenal fans. Uh, fair play to them. They made re a really good atmosphere. Um, and yeah, I think it, they. I think there was a bit of an under underestimation of uh, Bayern Munich from fans and maybe the team. I don't think based on Bayern Munich's league form, they were expecting that. And now it's it's an away game. At Bayern, yeah, I, I think it's advantage. They, and, and they needed, I think Arsenal needed to win that game. Now, not saying that it's impossible or it's hard. Yeah, of course, Arsenal have the quality to go there and win. But it's an uphill battle. And I think that, yeah, the advantage is in um, Bayern Munich's, Bayern Munich's um, you know, favour. Gaslighting Arsenal fans all week, people. A lot of people gaslighted Arsenal fans. Oh, you're this. You're very good in the Premier League. Bayern Munich are shit. Bayern Munich are... It's the worst Bayern Munich team. Five Bayern Munich players would start for Arsenal tomorrow. If you get them five players. Right? And people wanted to gaslight Arsenal fans and tell them that Champions League. Thierry Henry, your hero, went on Paramount Plus on CBS. Arsenal to win the Champions League. And they might. But the way they talk about Arsenal is that they gaslight their fans. They tell their fans, you are that mighty team. You are that mighty team. And then it goes. Even your, your guy, Thierry Henry, is telling you this. 
I genuinely believe Arsenal went to this game overconfident and they got punished. They got punished. This is the Champions League by a Munich, a manager that won it. And I said it last week on Straight Facts, a manager that won the comp competition before. One, it means it's not like he had been in the final. He had been in the final PSG and won it with Chelsea, right? Players that wore the gold medal at this stage, right? The players that have been under pressure before, Sanis, Goritska, the, uh, the, uh, the Kimmiches, the Neuers. Arsenal, as good as you are in the Champions League, is different type of fish. And you never learned. Arsenal fans never learned from Porto. And a lot of Arsenal fans, what's your prediction? 3 0, bro. We'll smash them at the Emirates. 3 0. And I'm not going to hold Arsenal fans to what they said, right? But for me, I sat with Terry and I told him the game is tougher than what we think. I sat with last week with Lawrence. I said that this Bayern Munich team is tougher than what we think. Don't judge them based on the group stage against Manchester United. This is the Champions League quarterfinal. I believe Arsenal can go through, but it was already 55 to 45 in terms of for Bayern Munich because of the experience and because the second leg is uh, the Allianz. It's an, it's an uphill battle for Arsenal now to win at the Allianz. I think they have the quality to do it, right? But I think advantage Bayern Munich. Arsenal need to learn from this. And I don't want to hear Arsenal fans saying it's a failure. Don't let people gaslight you. And I'm telling you this. Don't let people tell you this is a failure. For the first trial in the Champions League, you went to the quarterfinal. Ask Man City fans, <clears throat> where did you go out in the first time they reached the Champions League final? You haven't been in the Champions League. This team together haven't played in the Champions League ever, by the way. Don't give me Kai Havertz. Don't give me Jorginho. The team together. Arteta is still new. Arteta... Played, try to play his game tomorrow. It didn't work out. He was wide open. I think he will learn. But I, I don't get this notion that Arsenal is going to be a failure if they don't advance because it's the weakest five minute we have seen in 15 years. That's that's some rubbish, to be honest. That's some rubbish. Mm. That's when people want to banter Arsenal fans. Um, I'm, I'm not here for it. Arsenal quarter final in the first attempt in the Champions League after seven years is already an achievement. And you are in playing some mugs. Mm. I'm sorry, you are in playing Dortmund. You're playing Bayern Munich. I'm sorry. With all due respect, Bayern Munich have experience with this team. It's not heritage, by the way. This particular team has experience. I'm, I'm sorry. Mm. I'm not. I'm not having it, bro. No, I, th I think that's. I think that's fair. I think it, look, if you come out of the banter social media world, right, and you just look at it. You know, objectively, and you can say, yeah, quarterfinals, you know, you went out to buy in a team that always knocks out Arsenal. Yeah, objectively, then, yeah, that's right. But I still think, I think it's fair for fans to banter Arsenal fans who did go in and say, yeah, 3 nil. you know, we're, we're that team, we're going to do the double name, this year. Names, like, name, names, 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 I want names. Hold them. Well, listen. I, I, I want I'm names. pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I saw Egal as one of those one of those fans. <laughs> Shout out to Egal. Um, but yeah, there, there. I have to go through. There are a few fans like that. Um, but yeah, like the same way. I, th I think it is. Hold those fans accountable. You said you hyped up mm. your team to this level. You didn't achieve. And someone said this, and it, it I, really him. resonated with me. They uh, commented on him. a video I did. They said. Him. Yeah, someone said Arsenal fans. What that? Yeah, Terry's gonna get the banner this as well. This guy, this guy, this guy, bro. But they this said, guy, bro. Arsenal fans want the validation without the expectation, right? And I think that is so spot on. We all have to talk. If you say that Arsenal fans are, oh, they're not, they're not good enough to win this Champions League. They're not winning it. They're not gonna beat Bayern. They go mad. They're like, why can you say that? You know, and they start slating you. But at the same time, if we say you should, you better win it. If you don't win it, it's a failure. You can't win. It's the same situation. There's no win. I, I agree with that. Any gooner that's out here, we can win it. We can beat everybody. Um, we're, we're better than all these teams. Only only City scare us. We're going to smash by and like, like they're nothing. I think anyone that talks like that deserves the smoke. 100% I agree. Well, I spoke about the game yesterday. I thought it'd be close, but I also said if Arsenal maintain their composure and mental fortitude throughout the whole game, they could have gone on to beat them two or three nil. And I think if Ben White scores, I think the game would have gone. So that was there. My biggest fear for Arsenal, if you can call it a fear, was how they would cope emotionally with it. And I think that's that this level of football, the scrutiny, the music, playing under the lights against European elites, 
maybe in the back of their minds that, you know, their poor home record in European football with Arteta, their poor recent history in European football, it, it, when, when the truth is told, can they hold it together? And I think they started well. Mistake was made from Raya, poor pass from Gabriel, and they, they equalized. And then they just lost their way, and then they gave away a penalty, which when you watch that defending, that didn't look like Gabriel and, and Saliba that we see in the Premier League. That like And Saliba, by the way, in the last round, wasn't particularly great either. He just looked a little bit edgy, a little bit nervous. And you don't normally see that from him because he's been so composed in the Premier League. And this is Champions League immaturity from everybody involved yeah. at, at Arsenal right now, and including a lot of the fans as well. You heard that the atmosphere dropped out straight away. And I think fans play a really, really big part of keeping your players cool, calm and, and, and collected, which is why home games are so difficult when things start going away games. Sorry. are so difficult when things go wrong because you don't really have the same support. Man United got back into the game against Liverpool the other day. Cause when we scored that goal against a run of play, our crowd went crazy. Theirs went silent and Liverpool kind of joined in with our madness for 20, 30 minutes. And it weren't until Liverpool settled and started playing their game again and relaxed that they started opening us back up. And I think that's where it went wrong for Arsenal last night. And I felt like to, to, to go through 100%, I think they had to, I do think they had to win last night. So I am going to say it's advantage to buy Munich. That isn't to say Arsenal can't win away from home. They can, of course they can, if they get it right on the night. But that counter, but Bayern Munich's counter attack is so dangerous. And the good thing is, away goals don't count. And Arsenal have got to be really smart and really clever when they go to the to, to the Allianz Arena. They need to ensure that I don't think they should be attacking from the opening minute gun ho. They need to be, and that's what they did yesterday. It was one one, and they committed everybody forward and was getting caught with no one at the back. And I'm sitting there thinking, could have been three one. Like, huh? Remember, it could have been three one. Like been done for for a twenty minute period in that game. Yeah. It looked like Wenger's Arsenal that would just commit too many players forward. And if they do that away in Germany, it's going to be good, good night for them. So they have to get that bit right. Do they have the ability to? Yes. Do they have the tactical nails to? Yes. It's going to be about what goes on in their heads winning that game. But is it a failure if they go out? Again, I'm going to say no. And, and I'm going to say no based on, I thought quarterfinals was about right for them in the last round. When I, I don't care about what the bookie said. I looked at them as probably being anywhere between six to eighth favorites for the tournament from that point, which means quarterfinals is about your ceiling. Would they be, dis could they be, uh, will, should they be disappointed, Arsenal fans, with going out? Yes. But that's what you learn from. You learn from those mistakes and you go, you know, would West Ham have won what they won last year if they didn't have the previous season's experience? Maybe not. I think these things build up over time. So I don't think it's doom and gloom for yeah. Arsenal. But again, I've seen a lot of negative Arsenal fans out there today. If we go out, what? it's gonna it's gonna seep into the Premier League and damage us there. And I just think all of that talk is a little bit too much personally. I think I, 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 I want to add I want to add a little bit to what Terry said. I'm sorry, Dan. I want to add guys, I just want to like people think that Arsenal were out. Arteta has showed us over the past three months since he went to Dubai or two two and a half months now that he has the tactical flexibility to play different games. He did it at City. He did it at Liverpool. Arteta can go there and change. Arteta can go there and change the tactics. This is where Arteta earns his money. This is where Arteta is learning. And I think Arteta can go to the Allianz Arena and defend and play counter-attack. He can give Bayern the ball and play counter-attack. I think people around him should tell him. I actually think one of the problems that happened yesterday is that Arteta thought, I'm going to play my game against this Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, even Bayern Munich camp fed into this narrative that we're not good enough, that Arsenal are one of the best teams, that let Arteta do what Terry did. Arteta went 1-1 one, one up, full guns blazing, I'm leaving two behind. Who cares? My two defenders can stop them. I believe Arteta should not listen to the media, and I, I believe people don't understand that. He, it looked like yesterday he believed that he can control the majority of the game. You can't. You need to be adaptable a little bit. You need to do sometimes what you did in the league, what you did against Manchester City. I'm not saying sit deep and defend, but also give away position a little bit. Play on the counter-attack, like what you did against Liverpool. I believe Arteta will learn from this. I believe he will go to Bayern Munich and have a good game. It's it's in favour of Bayern. But I believe if, if someone can do it, it's the flexible Arteta that played against Man City, played against Liverpool, changed the way he plays. I believe Arteta can do this, in my it's, opinion. It's such a big and tough decision. I don't envy her because 
this is basically now a one game knockout, right? And how he sets up is, you know, so he could go and play more counter attacking and things like that. And, you know, that maybe that could work, but if it doesn't, you know, he's judged on it and now people will be saying, oh, why didn't you go out all attacking? You know, you've got the attacking power, play your game. So it's, it's going to be a, I don't yeah. think it's going to be an easy choice. Sorry. It's going to be an amazing, I can't wait for it. Second leg, I think it's going to be absolutely um, amazing. We have a lot of super chats to jump in. We do have a poll up, by the way, asking, should have asked him about a penalty. Currently, 34% say 100% no. 17% say I'm 50-50. 49% say yes, 100%. Um, so let's listen, a fairly even, a fairly even split, if we're being honest. And I think that's the one thing I will say they got they got right now with hindsight. My mind's probably changed on one bit is when it wasn't given, I understand them not overturning it because if half the people watching a 50-50 and then the other remainder are, are, are fairly closely split on yes and no, it must be hard for them. Uh, this is, is yeah, 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 here you are, 100%. Uh, Bayern have better players coming back from injury. It's a really good shout, AK. They have full, they have full team yesterday. There we go. I mean, yeah, I mean, both both teams look pretty much set in terms of that. Uh, Joshua here says, Terry, you keep saying it's a foul on Saka. Why can't it just be a coming together? The second uh, image hurts your argument because his leg is in an unnatural position, doesn't need to be above the knee to move. Good point. I think he's trying to get over the leg that's hanging out in front of him. Otherwise, he's going to... See, this is this is what I would say to that. Firstly, it could be a coming together. If somebody wants to say that, fair enough. If he doesn't raise his this is this is where it becomes, I think, it depends on the way you view football and your agendas. If he doesn't raise his leg at all and jump over it and just run straight into the leg, he'd still get called a fucking diver. If though yeah. there is a way away from it, you've got kids down or young people around you, like kids in your house, nieces, nieces nephews, like you yeah, mo. You know when you do that thing when you need to tread on someone's kid or your kid and you sort of jump backwards and your legs yeah. go straight? Now, Saka could have done that. If Saka does that, he doesn't win control of the ball. And then everybody would say to him, why'd you pull out? Take the hit, get the penalty. So I think I think whatever happens, some people are unbiased. And I do believe you two are unbiased. I really do. But whatever would have happened in that scenario, there would be a big percentage of people that, would, that are looking just to shit on Saka. So I, I yeah. think that... And I'm not fighting that he's a diver. I'm not willing. I'm not dying on if if I can accept that. Yeah, it's he didn't dive, but it's not a pen, right? I can accept that. That's not. I I just think it was a blatant pen. That's that's I'm fair. That's sure. fair. That's fair. It, 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 I think the bit for me is when, when people are saying he dived and the goalkeeper had his foot planted and didn't move. When I add those two bits in, I'm like, well, they're both lies. Um, therefore, the rest of your opinion doesn't hold as much water for me. Uh, this year, some more, we've got lots of super chats to get through. I didn't realize there's so many. I didn't see them all piling up. Uh, Manny here says, I'm mentally prepared for the for the goalpost to shift. If we win, so what? You beat the worst buy inside. We lose. Ha ha, you lost to the worst buy inside. That's just, that's rivals. You know what, you. Manny? You know what, Manny? Both ways. Go on, mate. Say something. Lowless was telling him he got Lowless really judges Arsenal fans based on what they say on the internet, bro. Like he comes to show <laughs> he, like he, bro, you are so adamant of judging them based on their view. I want to hear I your views. It. I know I just said it goes both ways. He's judging people on what they say about Arsenal. So short sure, doesn't does it not go both ways, Mo? Isn't that what I can't remember uh, the guy's name? Shout out to him, but uh, isn't that what he's saying? Oh, this is what they say. They they're gonna say this if this happens. They're gonna say that if that happens. I'm just saying it goes both ways. So no, people wanna we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Arsenal fans actually deserve the banter sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, big up Terry. Good show. Uh, big up the panel. Uh, Terry on loan to Arsenal. I'm laughing. Arsenal fans with big chest. Look, listen, people no look, look, people that don't like Arsenal will hate it when I when I when I support them on things. But I also spent 15 minutes earlier saying they should have conceded a penalty as well. So this isn't about me wanting Arsenal to win, but otherwise otherwise I'd have played I'd have took most side on that argument, wouldn't I? Surely, uh, yeah, surely what... you're not on loan in the Champions League. Tim. No, surely. no, I don't want I don't want them to win the Champions. I, I did say I'd rather someone that hasn't won it win it because I don't want the other teams getting an additional one over us. But, yeah, I'd rather that be Atletico or PSG or someone like that. Yeah, I want, yeah, I yeah. want Arsenal to win it. Uh, a lot of rivals were saying Bayern are crap and Arsenal will smoke them. 
uh, so they can banter Arsenal fans when they don't beat them. Uh, so transparent. It's true, Mr. Happy, but that's why you've got to control the narrative by telling them the nonsense and play it down and be humble. You've got to play it down and be humble. Uh, ask mm. them what is Saka's, what if Saka's leg didn't lift? What? What if Saka doesn't lift his leg and just hit? Like, what if Saka goes up? left where he dribbled with the ball and didn't jump to Manuel Neuer? <laughs> like what? He what, scored. what if he Saka scored. didn't oh. jump? We're he going into that again. He definitely went left. He definitely went left. He definitely went left. I don't think we're going to agree on this one. <laughs> he went left. I see it. I see it. <laughs> uh, Terry, I tagged a similar video video of Saka's motion. Listen, I've seen that video you tagged me in where his leg goes out in the same way and he doesn't go down. But I have seen two or three more. And I've got sent some. There's one against Villarreal where he blatantly puts his leg out to the side to get caught by someone that isn't in front of him. That, I say, is no penalty. So, again, I'm not, I'm not just going to defend every single one. Uh, Saka tried to buy it. He stayed on his feet at Anfield when Allison came out and he should have went down. That moment was on his mind. Wrong decision. Which one was the wrong decision? Wrong de this is, still, I still look at it this way. I still don't think he tried to go down because he only fell over because his legs came together, if that makes sense. If you look at the video, so I don't know, man. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Uh, what Lawless and Mo don't seem to understand is Saka first tried to change direction away from the keeper, but in his mind, he flicks the ball in the direction he'll run into, which is away from the keeper. That's but wrong. He, he knows where the keeper is when his oh, yeah, leg is. He mm. looks at the keeper and decided nah. to go to the keeper thing, to the keeper's nah. hand. He, nah. Oh my God. I, <laughs> how nah. hard is it to see that? I, I get when the thing about that. I'm not saying Terry is deluded or you are some fans. There is an angle that clearly, if I've seen this only angle that Terry uh, showed, 100% a penalty. Not a question. That first angle. But that second angle proved that maybe they have yeah. watched both angles. I could, I, I, maybe, okay, yeah, let, me, yeah. let me put it in a better way. Yeah, yeah, maybe they have that. watched both angles in the VAR room and told the referee, well, we don't think it's a penalty. It's not. And they should. Well, because yeah, there's some there's, there's some still photos from the opposite angle to the to the front one that I showed you guys, and when you see that those pictures, it's like, well, where can Saka go? And I, we've seen no video footage from that side. And I also agree that that side angle makes it look like he jumps into the into the goalkeeper. It really does. And equally, when you watch it in real time and slow it down, the normal TV angle, you could people that said that Neuer didn't move, you literally see his, his boot flick out. So it's depending on the angle you look at. It's, it's a bit like with James Madison the other day. There's still no, as far as we're aware, there was no close-up footage of him punching that player in the stomach. So they had quite grainy, far away views. Yeah. They couldn't quite tell. So I, I do I do get that. I do get where you're coming from, boys. And but I don't think you're deluded either. I like the argument and debate. It's good fun. Uh, both uh, Thierry Henry and Wright said it isn't a penalty. That's mm -hmm. fair dues, but I will be honest with you. I don't, unless they come up with fact and it make me go, oh yeah, I get it. Just because they're ex-pros, I don't take their opinion. I hate this argument, bro. I hate this argument. Yeah, I mean, oh, listen. Well, I, I, think it, I think they're saying that they, they would more likely lean into True. the Arsenal opinion. You know, no, I, mean, you, but, but, I get it. You, you can point, use their point. argument for you, but it doesn't mean their argument is a, their, 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 their opinion is a fact. That doesn't mean. No, no, it doesn't. But I think it's, it, it, yeah, it, it shows that, you know, they're overcoming any bias, but yeah, it doesn't, you know. Uh, do, you know what, do you know why I think I've looked into it so much is, is the lies I heard about it. So the Manuel Neuer didn't move, his feet were planted the whole time, Saka dived. It made me study the video more and maybe that's what's got into my head. If I just watched it in real time and people went, more of a coming together, I wouldn't, wouldn't have given it. I can accept that opinion. It's when people add on, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? You know, like when your mates had a fight with one geezer, but by the by the following week, when you're out of the pub, he beat up six geezers at once. Like, whoa, mate, I've got, I've got to step in and say something now. You're going too far. Uh, D yeah. here says, I can't lie. Terry has convinced me. There you go. Forensics, bruv. Forensics. You, you know what? I just want to say, on the last Super Chat, if you don't, if you can't debate penalties with Arsenal haters, then you can't debate them with Arsenal fans. That it works it works both really. ways, like I said, Mo. It, it works both ways. It if you can't debate does. With uh, this year says, uh, watched the games uh, back bad defensively, but by unforced mistakes. Uh, referee poor for both sides. Saliba lost his head. Odegaard was class. Uh, I blame Raya for the poor positioning, uh, but six could have kicked it out. Yeah, he could, he could. Listen, they're just saying that you're taught in football uh, when you're young. I'm not sure if you guys are, but I was. It was if in doubt, out. Yeah. Uh, there we yeah. go. Uh, now time for T-Dogs Arsenal loving. 
Thank you, Sean. Uh, if you watch Saka, no pen. If you watch Neuer, pen. <laughs> yeah. You ever, you ever done that thing on Instagram where they go, is it a green dress or a blue dress? And everyone has different yeah. different answers. Yeah. It's a little bit like that. And I do, yeah, it's a little like that. Uh, why is Saka obligated to change his direction? He's moving towards the ball. Neuer is not. This one we disagree. We're not thinking that he moved towards the ball. We're thinking he moved towards Neuer. And by the way, nobody is saying that a player should change his direction to avoid a player, by the way. But we're saying that Saka moved towards Neuer and left the ball to his left. What, what, we, need, what we need, UEFA, is like a bird's eye view. So we can look down on it. So uh, there's no yeah. angles. And we know if he goes left or right. And if he goes left, then Mo's got to shave off that goal. Be, 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 Bean Sports, make it happen. <laughs> yeah. I don't, no, no digital stuff. I want the real footage. Uh, like when Harvey Elliott did the same thing. Harvey Elliott's thing was different for me. And the boys, I think I'm being consistent. Harvey Elliott dragged his toe on the floor, which is not natural. Dra 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 dragging your toe. He was also at a 45 degree angle before contact, which tells yeah. me dive. Yeah. So if Sa by the way, if Saka was swan diving before the contact, I'd have said dive because I don't buy into that notion of they're protecting themselves. No, it's a dive. Then I would say 100% a dive. Uh, Kane said it was a 50 50, not a pen for me, though. Oh, he changed his mind from there. Yeah, Harry, Harry Kane said 50. Harry Kane has to say 50 50 because that's how he wins his penalties. He can't say it isn't because then he's setting himself up for failure. Uh, children speak, referee blows the whistle. Uh, if uh, I pick it up with my hand, it's a penalty. Mo and my dad. Mo and my dad is bigger than your dad. Oh, right. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't quite get yeah. it all. I, I, I'm, I'm just going to no. take it as... He's talking true. about me that calling it not a penalty in the beginning. I really explained it's subjective to intentions. Oh, okay. Fair yeah, point. I agree. Uh, how comes Tottenham have had the most fouls against, uh, but we only have one penalty this season, and people say we are the P Premier League darlings? That's another conversation entirely, that is. That's another comment. Yeah, I mean... I don't know, mate. Maybe you just haven't been fouled in the box as much as outside the box. Yeah, that, that could be it. That could be the one. Uh, already done that super chat here. I'm glad Arsenal didn't get a pen. It would have masked our poor performance. Uh, Arteta needs to learn from the draw and improve for the second leg. One, I was going to ask you boys this. Someone put a tweet out today and it said, this is why away goals has got to come back. Both games were epic last night, 2-2 two, two and 3-3, three, three, but it's basically nil-nil. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that's so true, isn't it? Like the way goals actually mean, barring making you not lose the game on the night, they mean nothing more than they used to. I thought it was a decent point. I actually don't uh, like the way goals. Never like them. I'm 50, I 50, think there's man. an argument for and against. Because you can, I, can, I can present you the other argument. A team that went and did 1-1 one, one away from home, they can go at their ground and defend. No, I, I agree. I can, I can yeah. present both. But, but, it's still, but what it means is there's jeopardy, like that 1-1 one, one draw, it creates jeopardy. Last night's results have created zero jeopardy for the next round. Other than, in terms of the scoreline, you could argue that Real Madrid, they've got a disadvantage now because they haven't got a lead going into the game. But but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I got hurt by a couple of away goals, so I don't know if I want it back. Chelsea are hurting over Kai. Jesus, tell you're trolling. I said that the other day. I didn't say that today. I said it over. I, I do think if Kai Havertz keeps delivering in the Prem and they win the Premier League, it's going to hurt Chelsea fans seeing it a little bit. It would, Of course it would. It's going to hurt West Ham fans seeing it. And they didn't want to see Rice leave if it was to happen, let alone you guys that celebrated getting 65 million for a bum. Imagine he actually delivers and helps win on the Prem. That's going to hurt a little as bit. As a starting on. striker for a Premier League winning team, not as a bench player, as a starting striker. It's it's astonishing if that happens. Harlan like Osherman are rubbish. Not for me, bro, is what D says here. Awesome. And this super says Haaland is still good. He still gets goals. What am I seeing is that higher level teams understand his value and are cracking down defensively. Fair enough. That's a good point. That's not a very good point. Not, not Luton, though. Uh, sorry to mention Chelsea, and I have to ask, before Chelsea was bought, the Premier League looked into Chelsea's books and gave it the okay. Uh, Blue.co does the same and finds a problem. Who's at fault? Well, Blue. we don't know how much the government and the league looked into their books and that's, you know, it, I, I doubt they did a, a full thematic review over the last 13 years of their finances in the space of a few weeks before it was sold. So, cause those thematic reviews take months. Um, how do I know that? Cause my, I used to, 
be involved in that in the banking world. And just one department can take six months to go through. So, yeah, it's, they're big. The sales seem to be quite rushed as well for me. Yeah, exactly. So that's why I don't think they did a full, full review. Uh, it's not um, about just goal volume. It's also about your versatility and against uh, different defences. I've seen many average defenders take him out of games this year. And I, listen, I, I think there's, that's that's part and parcel of it, but that will, time will tell. If this becomes the same next season, the year after, the year after, and he starts scoring less and less, then I think you can say he was found out. But he's back to scoring 55, 60 goals next season. Calling him a League Two player is crazy. And I think you need to, yeah. The thing is, when people say these things, there's no point at the end of it. It's like, okay, so you're saying that. What's your prediction then? What's your point about him? You're gonna what you say? What what you what are you saying? This is gonna lead to if it's just no, nah, I'm taking a dig. I don't see the point. Uh, Terry, uh, but Terry Mo just said he's not a good footballer. Harland is a good footballer. Harland is an incredible goal scorer, but as as okay, a player who leads, this guy, needs, Uncle Matt, he is taught, needs to be thought scoring uh, goals, averaging 26 touches per game per 90 minutes, amazing. Uh, mm. I said he's not great technically. But he has a very good awareness of where to be. Like Philippe Winzaghi, if you're old enough to watch Philippe Winzaghi, Philippe Winzaghi wasn't amazing, but he scored abundance of goals. Um, that's it. Uh, great points, uh, uh, Mo. A nice breakdown on City's issues. Thank you, Thank D. You. Are you lying? Show the XG. I don't All understand. right, I'm gonna. This is the guy that called me a liar, uh, and he sent a super chat finally. Uh, Basically, I literally said before I said I did not look at the XG, but I believe Man uh, Real Madrid created more chances than Man City to score, and at the end, it is actually true because both XGs were before were less than one, by the way, and both scored three goals. So XG here doesn't represent what happened in the game. If you're gonna, go, you know, both teams XG was 0. 0.8 and 0. 0.6, and this scored three and this scored three. So basically, XG isn't a representation of what happened again. Mm. Uh, Terry, mm -hmm. are you taking Zizou over Lampard when Lampard is far more efficient? We had that. We had this exact same conversation on a show last week. Depends on the type of midfield player I'm looking for. If I need a goal-scoring midfielder with high goal volume, and I already have amazing creativity, you may look at Lampard over 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 Zinedine Zidane, depending on what you've got. But if I need someone to control my midfield. I need someone to dictate the play. If I need someone to open up and thread the ball through the eye of a needle and to knit my team together, then you're picking Zinedine Zidane. It all depends on what you want. You may have two highly prolific inside forwards, so you don't need a Haaland-type striker that's going to score you goals. You may look for someone that's more of a facilitator. So this is the thing what I say about it's not all one size fits all. Zidane, as we all know, is a much better football player than Lampard. But if you've already got an amazing team, but your team needs, needs more goals from midfield, you are probably going to pick Frank Lampard as long as he's technically yeah. proficient enough to play in your team. So again, it, it, it's, it, you, 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 I respect the super chat, but you've asked me that two weeks running. You're just going to get the same answer. I, I had that debate about Rice where before he went to Arsenal every week, people saying, Oh, this Gwendouzi is better than Rice. And this player is better than Rice. I said, look, the thing about Rice is you don't notice it because he's very, very good at his job at what he does on the pitch. He's not the most silky player. That you'll find but what he does he, he's excellent at and i think that's same for other players you know like harlan one sec i'm just messaging messaging someone sorry <laughs> no, I, I, like, I, wasn't I, wasn't I was listening i just uh was messaging no, that's uh, that right. game, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no control yeah that game was amazing to watch i loved it uh referee whistled twice and told Arsenal to take the goal kick again. Yeah, that's why me and Dan have said it's a penalty. Mo's just chatting there. Mo's Arsenal simp in there. Uh, mm. Letter of the law versus <laughs> spirit of the game. Uh, Terry, where do you find the clown on the left? Where? Where, where indeed? Where did you find him, Terry? Where, <laughs> where, did, you, where did you find him? Where did you find this guy? <laughs> just sound weird. I found him on the internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, oh my God, lawless rules and laws are created to manage advantages and disadvantages. You can't talk about laws and exclude the concept of advantages. Place your emotion bias aside and use logic as well. But but why they're created doesn't mean that you throw them out of the window just because there is no, the, the rules are the rules at the end of the day. So whether you say, right, we're going to put all these rules in place, so there's no advantage in this regard. And then just get them out. The rules are there, mate. 
you know, you've got to be consistent. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, about, the only about this penalty thing, it's subjective to if you think is the ball in play or not. By the way, no, a whistle a, doesn't mean the ball in play. By the I, way, I, I, I do get your point there. My view is this the only way I'm accepting it is if anybody else does it, they can't give a penalty now. Can you imagine if, if, but it Barcelona, happens all the time. It happens. No, 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 they don't give penalties for it. Is what I'm saying. If they suddenly start, if they give a penalty tonight for the same thing, then there's a problem. Yeah. They just can't give a penalty for it. Now, as long as they're consistent, it's fine. Uh, Mo, buying a penalty can't be subjective. It is objective and it's 100% a penalty. Uh, by the way, uh, big up to all of you and Eve Mubarak. Thank, thank you very you much. Bye. 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 Thank you, you as well. I just explained why it's subjective mm. because it's subjective to if you think the ball is in play or Raya is giving it to Gabriel to restart. You can give him a yellow card for wasting time, but it's subjective to how you see if the ball is in play or not. Because I've seen this happen in my club. Onana does it a lot with defenders at, at, uh, at Man United, where he gives the ball to another defender to play him, to have Onana ball at this feet. So it happens. Mm. Well, what... the, the game here said Saka tried to buy it. He stayed on his feet at Anfield, but Allison came out and he should have went uh, down. Sorry, that I already done that one. Yes, I have. Sorry. Uh, I've just seen that Gabriel mistake a lot. I've seen that Gabriel was like a lot on the women's game and even they get penalized penalty. Oh, I, I, I haven't seen it, but thank you. I, ha I think I have, I did see a clip of it in the week. I did see it on Twitter a while ago. Oh, okay. So, um... Would Jerry Barton share it? Probably. <laughs> yeah, it might have been. I don't follow him. But... I don't follow him either, but he just, he's one that I've muted him now because I just, do you know what it is? I just don't, I'm just someone that when I'm on, I don't mind football banter and a laugh. But stuff like that, I just it's just not what I'm on online for. Like it's like I, honestly, I, anything anything political, I mute so much. Say like there's something trending that's political. You know when that bridge got hit into the other day and everyone had conspiracy theories. I went onto my mutes on Twitter or X and anything connected to it, Baltimore, Bridge, Boat, I just muted all the words because I just mm -hmm. don't I'm just purely there for football talk, and that's all I want to do. Uh, at Bayern Munich, Arsenal should play like how they did against City, defend like hell, low block and counter. I agree, AMT. Uh, Neuer passing against oh, the, oh my that that pass from Neuer the flick up, yeah, could be illegal to do that. It was ridiculous. It was the thing about it, he passes with both feet, bro. It's ridiculous. Oh, no, great. He's the just, long he's balls just, with both feet is ridiculous. He's just great. Uh, Kane's red card and and Kane's elbow assault. Do you think Kane was lucky not to get a red card? No. Yes, yeah, it's it's, it's a look. Kane is a dirty player, um, and I've seen still him do a lot of dirty things. He is, no, he's, he's he's but I don't think it's a record for one, one reason. I just watched it again to make sure I'm saying my opinion right. Gabriel, the ball is coming high. Why is Gabriel's nick at Kane's elbow level? Why is he going down to hit the elbow? The ball is higher there. Why are you ducking down Harry Kane? He literally saw Harry Kane trying to protect himself. Yes, Harry Kane led to the elbow, but Harry Kane didn't jump. What? Harry Kane stayed on his feet. Why is Gabriel's face or neck is going to Harry Kane's elbow? There is no reason for it to go down. It's ridiculous. I don't get it. Well, you just explain that. Why did Gabriel headbutt Kane's elbow? <laughs> I'm gonna show. You. I'm gonna send it to you. And no, no, I'm, no I've seen it. it. I've seen it. Look, for me, it's if there was a little bit more drawback of the arm, I'd yeah. say red. But it was probably just about a yellow in the end. Yeah. It was borderline, but there weren't enough force in it, in my opinion. Yeah. Kane was just trying to protect himself. Like, yes, he went with the elbow, but like he's going back. He's expecting G Gabriel's chest. You know what I mean? He's not expecting that. Like, come on. <laughs> well, you're great. <laughs> uh, listen, boys, I want to thank you both for coming on the show today. I really appreciate it. We are live tonight after the Champions League game. So tune in uh, to the show then. The poll, by the way, ended on 49% of people saying, yes, it was a penalty. 19%. Say I'm 50-50 and just 32% say 100% not a penalty. Um, so 3-2 Arsenal then. You guys, you won 3-2. Arsenal fans. <laughs> <laughs> I won, I won the debate. That's what I'm happy about. I've won the debate. <laughs> wonder who's going to quit the show now. I've won the debate. Well, Who knows? Well, Who knows? I think you've basically turned into a bit of an Arsenal fan chat. I think we've got mostly <laughs> Arsenal fans in the chat. <laughs> uh, maybe. Maybe a little bit of it. But listen, I want to thank everyone who's tuned in. Thank you very, very much indeed. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And we'll see you all again very, very soon. Peace.